University of Michigan football. Brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. By National Steel Corporation. National, driving for number one in quality, delivery, and price. And by Burger King. Aren't you hungry for a delicious flame-broiled juicy Whopper at Burger King now? A bit of a fall afternoon on this October 15th, 1983. More precisely, a bit of a afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan. More precisely, Michigan Wolverines are hoping it'll be a bit of a afternoon football-wise against the Wildcats of Northwestern University. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Lay, along with Jim Brandsetter, and I guess today will be a battle of the ground against the air. Without a doubt, Northwestern throws the ball all over the ball yard. They don't throw deep. They have that possession passing a game, and it's going to be up to Michigan's secondary and their rush, their people up front, to get to the quarterback, Sandy Schwab, and try to stop that. So when you think of Northwestern, you think offense, not defense. A pretty good offense. Without a doubt. And the key to the offense is Sandy Schwab, their quarterback, number 17. He's got a slingshot arm. He will throw the ball to a lot of different receivers, and he will throw it a lot. Last year, he threw it 71 times against the Wolverines. And the thing about him is he's got a lot of targets, not the least of which is his big tight end, John Harvey, number 85. Now, Harvey caught 17 passes against Michigan last year. He broke an NCAA record. He gained over 200 yards in that game. He is an outstanding tight end. He will go right to the ball. He will go to the open area. And it's one of the keys to Northwestern getting anything going against Michigan is that offensive pass game. Harvey will be a key. The other guy they must watch for is Ricky Edwards, their tailback. He is a good runner. He is one of the top guys in the statistics in the NCAA. But the key, he will also be a great receiver. If he gets the ball in the open field, Michigan's going to have trouble. So far, the Wildcats have been able to score four touchdowns. That's all this year. They can control the ball, though, and I think that's the key. Their passing game allows them to hang on to the ball. They'll probably control it more than Michigan State did. The kickoff in just a moment. Well, the Michigan Wolverines this afternoon trying to collect their fourth win of the Big Ten season. Starting this ball game with three wins and no losses in conference play, Todd Slopey will handle the opening kickoff. The Wolverines will be defending the south goal. That is to our right with Northwestern Wildcats receiving. And they'll send back a couple of those speedsters, Ricky Edwards and Tony Coates. Edwards, the tailback or halfback in the offensive unit, Tony Coates, a flanker. Meanwhile, the Wildcats of Northwestern, again falling on hard times, a record in the Big Ten, one and two. Overall, one and four, and they have been shut out three times so far this season. Their lone win over Indiana, 10 to eight. Here's our opening kickoff, and Slopey driving that one right through the end zone, and the Wildcats will put it in play at their own 20-yard line. As you were told on the opening, Schwab is the man who'll keep that ball in the air. There is a flag down right around the 14-yard line of Northwestern. We'll wait for that call, so we get a flag on the opening kickoff. And the way things are shaping up, it could be a clipping call. Set down at the 20-yard line. Clipping both ways. Northwestern and Michigan. So the penalties will offset themselves and we'll get our first play from scrimmage. Swab, the quarterback, the running backs, Edwards, along with Cummings. The receivers, Coates at Flanker, the split end, Jenkins. The tight end is John Harvey. And Schwab on a draw up the middle, picks up about six yards, fumbles on the carry, and a scramble for that loose ball around the 28-yard line of Northwestern. Ray, the referee ruled that Schwab was down, so the fumble does not count, and he gets a six-yard gain. Schwab certainly is not a real threat as far as a runner. He is a minus 67 coming in this ball game. He's a decent little quarterback in the sense that he's got good quick feet, and he is, does not hesitate to run the ball. Here we see him go down, and the ground was the 
that's the reason for that fumble. And as we know, the rules say the ground can't cause a fumble. So that goes to Schwab being down. Here is Edwards on the first carry. Very close to the first down area at the 30-yard line and might come up short by inches. But there is a threat in Edwards. Strong, all-purpose runner that Northwestern has. Burback, Banazak. But in this place of Banazak, a guard today, it'll be Bomber. Yale is the center along that line. Daminga at the right guard, and then a young man from Detroit Catholic Central, Jack Vandenberg, at the right tackle for Northwestern. So that sets up the offense, trying to pick up the first down. Schwab handling it and trying to just go over the back of his center, John Yale. And again, that pile up very close to the 30-yard line. Real good series on that play by Michigan defensively as they stopped up the middle very well, and Schwab didn't make it on third and a half yard. And I believe Dennis Green and Northwestern's going for it, and that's a big gamble here very early on their own 30, right? Fourth down and less than one, and it certainly is. Cooper had gone back into Michigan territory thinking that they would punt. Now has to quickly come back up into the secondary of Michigan. The Northwestern gambling early in this ball game on fourth and inches. Schwab trying it again and looked as if he had enough momentum to carry him across the 30-yard line and enough for the first down. So the gamble pays off for the Wildcats and for Coach Dennis Green, who was shaking the dice, Jim, a little bit early. Well, I think he's got to. He knows that he's coming into this game outmanned, and he has got to get something going early and give his kids some confidence that they can move the ball and do some things against Michigan. And that's why he went on that fourth down. And I think that uh, that helps because he knows he controls the ball. If he's got the football, Michigan can't score. You saw a quick shot of the coach, Dennis Green, in his third year at Northwestern. First and 10, Schwab going to the air and a little swing pass out to Edwards. And uh, we may see a bunch of those little passes underneath in this ball game today. Northwestern's pattern is to pass the ball as soon as Schwab sees any pressure at all, he has got a dump off man he can go to and he goes to him immediately anytime he feels pressure. In that instance, Michigan had it defense well. Vince DeFelice, the defensive tackle, saw that screen or that little swing pass develop. He got right over in it. Second down and 12 for Northwestern. Over the middle this time to Edwards, completed the 30 and gets very close to the 40 yard line. And one of the favorite plays of the Wildcats to a man that will be open in the middle. Exactly. Again, they will run a lot of receivers into the pattern. They will run people on either sideline deep, and they will run people down the middle. Here you see the linebackers taking that deep drop, and coming underneath is Edwards, the tailback. Now, that's his running ability to get by both linebackers before both Cooper and John Lott, secondary people, had to come up and make the original hit. Dave Meredith getting uh, credit for that tackle. He is in there in the right defensive tackle position. Good breaking tackle that time as Casey Cummins, the fullback, put the shoulder down and got a little extra yardage for first down in the Michigan Territory at the 47. Well, this is that possession passing game we talk about. And what happens is, is they will get a receiver just into the open, enough room to have. Now he's got some room to run. Missed tackle, missed tackle. That's what caused the big game. Michigan has got to wrap these guys up. Northwestern comes in with a lousy reputation, yet if they get fired up and gain some confidence early, they can be sticky offensively, and that's what's happening here early. Second first down for the Wildcats, De Felice, Sensich, and uh, Meredith, and they front wall of the defense for Michigan. And Edwards, breaking a tackle, gets back to just about the line of scrimmage. Hassel, Rangel, Mallory, and Lyles in there at the linebacking post. The defensive backs for Michigan, Lott Cochran, along with Ganton Cooper. Hassel read this screen very nicely. You can see him come right in. Now, he just misses the tackle, but he slowed Edwards up enough to allow the secondary to get over it. Michigan's defense knows that Northwestern will screen a lot. That is one way to negate a heavy rush. They will run the screen. The outside linebackers, like Hassel on that play, are very much responsible to get inside that and stop it. Second and nine, Schwab now four for four for 23 yards, goes to the air for the fifth time and completes it very close to a first down. A flag has gone down. 
that one was passed to his tight end, John Harvey. Well, the flag is down, and it was Harvey. Uh, Schwab actually threw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage, right? He rolled out, and Carlton Rose let him break contain. It's something that you can't do against Sandy Schwab because he's quick enough. He's got good feet. You can't allow him to break contain and get outside. And Dennis Green will allow him to roll out. And that's another way that Green, in his own coaching, has given Schwab time to throw. He will drop back some. He will roll out some to allow Schwab more time if he's getting a lot of pressure. In that instance, Schwab rolled out, decided not to run, but he threw it past the line of scrimmage, and that's a penalty, and the loss it down. So Michigan gets a break right there defensively. Now they're looking at third and about 13, right? So uh, the referee, Tom Quinn and his crew, kept busy in the early moments of this football game. 10-19 to go in the opening quarter. March back to the 49-yard line of Northwestern, third and 14. You mentioned, Jim, we'll see Schwab with a three steps and then a quick release. If he rolls out of the packet, which we've seen him do to his right and left, he still will hang on to it. We'll take some punishment to try to get that completion. Dropping back and going deep this time. It was intended for John Harvey. It's tied in and underthrown and almost intercepted by Michigan players. Lot, I believe, Gant over there. And Gant shook up at his own 30-yard line ball was underthrown by Schwab and it's a surprise that that wasn't intercepted because he threw it right in the middle of three Michigan people. They just couldn't react back and quickly enough to get it. Tony Gant for the second week getting the start except Tony right now was shaken up on that last play down hard on the turf trying to make that interception. It'll be fourth down once we get going again fourth down and 14 ball back at the Northwestern 49-yard line. And while we're talking about injuries, and we've alluded to it for the past couple of weeks, oh, now the linebacking core of Michigan is dead. While we continue to have work done on Gantt, let's pause for this message. No score. Until recently, if you wanted to switch to the Burger King Whopper and you lived on 9th Street, you had to settle for a make-believe. You want to switch? Yes, sir. One Whopper, please, and hold the onion. But now there's a tastier alternative. Because with a little help from Burger King, some local folks have opened a store right in the neighborhood, which makes switching to a juicy Whopper as easy as walking across the street. Hey, don't tell me you're out of business. No, nope, just out for lunch. <laughs> Aren't you? <laughs> that must be some house you're buying. Well, for $10,000, it better be. Since we started Manufacturer's Bank over 50 years ago, our ideals haven't changed. But today we have new ideas, like our equity access account, up to a $100,000 line of credit at 12% interest based on the equity in your home. Old ideals, new ideas, <laughs> Manufacturer's Bank. That's my bank. <laughs> Gant coming off under his own steam. One formation now for Northwestern. And the top punter in the Big Ten, John Kidd, to handle those duties. He is actually sixth in the nation with a 45.7 average. Devin Cooper standing back at his 10-yard line. Kidd kicking about from his own 38-yard line. Cooper will take it close to the 16-yard line and picks up close to four yards to the 20 before being forced out of bounds on the far side of the field. So for the first time this afternoon, the Wolverines will go on offense. And on offense this afternoon, it means Steve Smith starting at quarterback. Rick Rogers invited to be in there at the tailback position. And the fullback, we're taking a look at Eddie Guerin, number 32. The receivers will be Nelson. Along with Vince Bean, Nelson the tight end, Bean the split end, and Lawson the flanker. Check it, make it Triando Markray as the flanker, and he is split wide to the left. We'll check that interior line of the Wolverines in just a moment. Rogers on the carry. Picks up at least six, possibly seven yards before going out of bounds over by the Northwestern bench. So Rick Rogers coming this ball game on the ground averaging around 4.9. A take, carry. take a look at how Michigan is isolating on their linebackers. They don't block the linebacker right there, Alex Moyer, number 26. He is the responsibility of Garrett, and that's the play that Michigan will run a lot against the Northwestern defense. It's a 3-4 look, 
and they will isolate those linebackers on that fullback and have the tailback break the run off whichever way the block goes. If there is a strength on the Northwestern defense, it's the linebacking core. First down for Michigan, up to around the 33-yard line of the Wolverines on the carry from Rick Rogers. We're we'll talking about Cruz, Karras, and Prince, the defensive threesome up front for Northwestern, then with Moyer, Bobbitt, Morgan, and Gwenley as the linebackers, Gwenley on the outside, regarded as the best. Rogers, two carry, 13 yards. And Ray, again, we're going to see a lot of that tandem right there, the fullback lead blocking for that tailback because we've seen it twice today already. And that fullback's going to get a lot of blocking done this afternoon against this Northwestern defense. At the 34-yard line, Steve Smith hitting Rick Rogers, and Rogers will have enough for the first down at the Michigan 45-yard line. A couple of carries and a pass and a couple of first downs for the Wolverines. Up front for Michigan against Northwestern's defense on a straight pass block. You see the pocket develop around Steve Smith. Dixon is back there as the second man, and I think Tom Dixon just said hello to Keith Cruz, their defensive tackle, because Cruz ran into Dixon, and it was Dixon who knocked him right on his back. So Tommy Dixon's ready to play today, and the referee's uh, calling a timeout. The chains aren't officially marked and ready to go yet, but the interesting thing about Michigan's offense is they felt that Defensively, the weakest part of Northwestern was their secondary. That's where they can hurt them the most. And on that play, they put Rick Rogers over at a wingback position. And the Northwestern secondary made a mistake in coverage. As he came out of the backfield, nobody was there to cover him. And the Wolverines had an easy 9-10 yard pass. Well, with that leaky secondary on defense for Northwestern, a couple of changes. Nevels and Kenny Watkins at a corner and strong safety position. Nothing going that time, and a couple of yards lost, and the best down lineman was a fellow by the name of Keith Cruz, and Keith was in there to make the stop that guy. Well, I think we saw in a replay in the previous play, Tom Dixon really tattooing Keith Cruz on that pass protection. I think Keith might have gotten a little upset about that one, and he came right in there and made a big play, stopped Rodgers for a two-yard loss. So we go second and 12 for Michigan. No score in this ball game with eight minutes and 40 odd seconds to go in the opening quarter. Michigan trying to wrap up their fourth conference one of the year. Smith on the carry. Looked as if he wanted a pass after he rolled out. Chased by Gwendolyn, the outside linebacker, regarded as the best linebacker on this Northwestern crew. And he makes the stop. Steve probably should have turned this ball outside and kept running. You watch. It's a play action. The linebackers are held inside. Now, he wants to throw. Now, here he turns it back inside, and Gwendling does not overrun the ball and gets a hand on him. If he'd have kept going outside, he'd have probably picked up four or five more yards before he got to the sideline. But he turned it back up inside, and I think that cost him. Single back, and that is Rogers from Michigan. They got speed at the line of scrimmage in the way of wide receivers and a third and nine. And this to Mark Ray is completed. So the young man makes his first collegiate reception, the young man from Detroit the Forest, a sophomore, and first down for Michigan. Northwestern running a straight umbrella, three deep zone. Mark Ray comes out, runs the post pattern, and comes underneath the deep backs and behind the linebackers. Smith hits him in that seam, and uh, he gets in there for a nice coverage. Here's the secondary, and you can take a look. See, the, the, the back people are backing up, and right underneath, into that seam, is Mark Ray. Good play, good replay on the defensive coverage. At the Northwestern 37, first and kick, Rick Rogers. Finding a lot of daylight after he got past the line of scrimmage, finally brought down by Nevels, but not until Rogers got close, if not over the 25-yard line. Up front, here it is again, the fullback block. Bang, he hits the uh, linebacker, and Rogers rips right off that block through the hole. They're isolating those linebackers, and the offensive line is creating the hole, and once that fullback gets in and makes contact with the linebacker, tailback blocks, which runs whichever way he wants to, and it's really successful against this 3-4 look of Northwestern. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. There's Rick Rogers coming back from the wing-back position on the right side. Gets close to the 15-yard line. Bobbitt is in there to make the stop. Bobbitt, a young man from U of B High School out of Detroit. This is what they call a tackle trap. Watch Doug James, number 73, 
He comes through the hole. There he is, and he knocks off Bobbitt, and Rogers is able to get good yardage, at least nine yards on the carry, and that's that tackle trap where they bring the backside tackle around through the hole and block the linebacker. Again, the tailback cuts off that block. Second down and one, Rogers five carries for 32 yards. Second and one. Great fake there to the fullback, and Smith then rolling to his right gets the first down, and the Wolverines knocking on the door of the Wildcats, Lofton in there to make the stop finally on Smith, close to the five-yard line. Well, they're doing it up front. The offensive line is blocking very well, and Northwestern is skating outside. A lot of people do that against Michigan's offense because they're worried about the option. People will move outside to close down the perimeter. They don't want to allow Michigan to sweep. When he came out with the option, saw the fullback, had nowhere to go. He pulled it back up and went inside the tackle. Smith on a couple of carries for a total of 13 yards. First and goal. Here is Rick Rogers. Gets close to the two-yard line. Smothered at the two at the bottom of that pile. Is Loft in the cornerback moving up quickly. Also in there to help out. Nevels. At the two-yard line, second a goal for Michigan. You see Rogers there and Garrett, the running backs. In this drive, it's been ten plays, and Rogers has carried six of those. Second and goal. Rogers sliding through, should have it. Touchdown it is for Michigan as Rick Rogers gets his seventh touchdown on the ground of the 83 seat. A couple of yards out on that second and goal, and Rick Rogers on his seventh carry of that drive. Real nice blocking up front. Rogers takes the ball behind Art Ballard is number 59. That was a trap play on the goal line, which is somewhat unusual. Sometimes they'll call that a fold block. But it was Art Ballardis leading the way through the hole from his right guard spot. Bergeron at five for the extra point. Almost blocked, but it gets up with enough momentum and through the uprights, and it's Michigan. Seven, Northwestern, nothing. Hey, guys, I'm back. Catch you anything, Riley? Yeah, caught this granddaddy of a fish. But when I got him in the boat, he says, I'll give you three wishes if you throw me back. A talking fish? Well, it was hot. I was thirsty, so I wished for a nice cold Stroh's beer. And there it was. Mmm. Tasted so good, I wished for another one. Two wishes, two Stroh's. And what'd you do with the third wish? Hey, would I forget my friends? From one beer lover to another, Stroh's. Every weeknight, starting at 6.30, a new free press hits the streets. The Bulldog Edition, bringing you the kinds of things you won't find in any other paper, like same-day New York and American stock exchange closings. The latest breaking news and sports you can get today. Plus your favorite free press columnists and features hot off the press. Just go to the free press box marked with the blue top to pick up the freshest paper you can read this evening. The Free Press Bulldog Edition. Look for it. You'll find it on streets all over town. Slopey to handle the second kickoff for the Wolverines of this afternoon with 5.28 to go in the first quarter. Number two is Coates at number 20 for Northwestern Ricky Edwards. And Northwestern coming this ball game as far as defense, and it's still a forest defense, ninth against the rush, tenth against the pass and conference player. Eleven plays uh, covering 79 yards for that Michigan score, and this one goes by Edwards. And so Northwestern to go on the attack with a couple of first downs and then giving the ball to Michigan on a punt. Northwestern has passed four out of five for 23 yards, and Michigan on that drive was two for two for 28 yards. But, Ray, offensively, Northwestern did control the ball some in that first quarter. I'm sure they didn't have it a long time, but it's 528 left to go in the first quarter. Michigan's only had the ball once and scored once. Northwestern, with that possession passing game, can hold the ball some. They've held it already more than Michigan State did, I believe, in the first quarter last week. Cummings and Edwards, the running back. Schwab on a throw to his fullback. Cummings intercepted by Lott. And Michigan.
pushing it inside the 25-yard line. A ball that Cummings, the fullback, should have had a play on. It bounced off the shoulder pad, and Lott was on the spot for the interception. Ray, that's about the third or fourth tip ball we've seen this year. And again, you can't say enough about the drills the defensive backs do in practice about tip ball. Pass thrown a little bit behind and too hard. There's one bounce, bounces off Hassel, and John Lott reacting up has to come up with that right hand and catch it. Now, that isn't an accident. They do that every day in practice, and that is why that drill pays off, because if John Lott had not been aware or they haven't done it all year long, that ball probably would have fallen incomplete, but Michigan gets a big break. Boy, they do, and that first uh, interception for Lott. Jared on a carry, close to the 20-yard line of Northwestern. The line of scrimmage began at the 23rd of the Wildcats, at the 23, that is. About a three-yard three carry that time by Garrett, so it'll be second down and seven as Michigan has a great opportunity to go out in front by a couple of touchdowns with 455 to go in the opening quarter being wide to the left mark ray wide to the right rick rogers in behind garrett and the handoff is to rogers again daylight first down and finally out of bounds at the seven yard line as rogers almost got in but over there in time to make the stop was Neville's number 44. Good blocking at the point of attack. Fullback kicks out on the end, and Rogers cuts back up inside real quickly. Vincent Bean, a good block downfield to just tie up that safety man, Kester, long enough to allow Rogers to break it back outside and get good yardage. Rogers has picked up a total of 49 yards so far on eight carries. We're only in the opening quarter with 4.42 to go. So this could be a big afternoon as far as the offensive philosophy is concerned of Michigan against Northwestern. Steve Smith that time faking to his fullback and then rolling to the left and getting inside the five yard line. So Smith, his third carry of the afternoon and finally brought down by Lofton, the cornerback. Well, that's the option play. And once again, we saw it break back up inside the tackle. That's because Northwestern is skating outside, trying to take away the sweeps and trying to take away the option outside. When they do that, things open up inside, and Steve Smith recognized it and got inside and got good yardage. Double tight end employed by Michigan. Nelson, Jim Nelson on the right, Carthens in there on the left side as a tight end. And here is Rick Rogers right up the middle and very close to the touchdown as he stretched at the goal line and looked as if he got over, but the official indicates his knee was down before crossing the goal line, inches away from a touchdown. Well, one of the things about the ball has got to break the plane of the end zone. Take a look at the two linebackers inside, Bobbitt and Morgan. They come up and they take on the guards. That's good running by Rodgers because he was able to see that and cut it back away from where they met the guards. Fullback Garrett hits the wall. No indication by the officials that he got over as yet the up mile and Northwestern doing a little cheering down there right at the goal line. And no gain. In fact, maybe a loss of a couple of inches that time as Michigan going straight ahead testing that interior defensive line of Northwestern and it didn't bulge a bunch that time. Now I think Michigan's got to come out here and they'll probably run a tailback Give that tailback more time to watch a hole open up rather than try to pull back up the middle. Fourth and goal for the Wolverines with Garrett and Rogers. Steve Smith greeted at the door and then fights and struggles and gets inside the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. So Smith has chalked up his fourth touchdown, about a third touchdown of the year. Good call in that Northwestern is bottling everything up inside. And you'll take a look at it. They're looking for the fullback. They both come in there real hard. Now the play's going outside. Here comes Bob at number 41. Makes a good hit, but Steve Smith struggles, and there the ball has broken the plane of the end zone. Even though they dragged him out, once that ball breaks that plane, it's a touchdown, and the referee, the headlines, was sought and called the touchdown. Bergeron trying to make it a 14-0 lead. The try for the extra point. And his perfection with that one. So with 2.43 to go in the first quarter here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, the Wolverines of Michigan, 14. Wildcats of Northwestern coming. I'm Bob McBride. 
My company makes steel, and more than a third of it goes into the best cars in the world. We've been selling steel in Detroit for 50 years. We're going to do it for the next 50 with quality, service, and delivery that rate number one. My company's National Steel, and when I say we're driving for number one, believe it. As the president of National, I won't settle for less. Jeans, only $29.89 through Sunday. Van Horns at Major Malls. The costly turnover by the Wildcats of the interception brought back by Lott to the 23-yard line results in seven more points for Michigan as the Wolverines went those 23 yards after getting the interception on only six plays. And that one-yard scamper by Steve Smith, the extra point to make it 14-0. Edwards and Coates to take the kickoff from Slopey. Edwards, halfway back of the end zone, elects not to bring it out, and so the Wildcats will bring it up to their own 20-yard line on the touchback to try to get something going. The story on that scoring drive, Jim, and it didn't take long. No, but the key again was the turnover, and that's one of the things that Northwestern really cannot afford to do offensively. They've got to control the ball, keep Michigan's offense out the field in order for them to have any kind of a chance to stay in this game. If they give the ball to Michigan's offense without much distance to go, Northwestern's going to be in serious danger of getting blown out. Northwestern starting out again at the line of scrimmage. They've got a couple of first downs on their first drive and then uh, finally had the punt. That was Edwards on the carry trying to get outside, but a flag has gone down. About right around the 22-yard line, so we'll wait for the call on that one. Schwab, the quarterback, checking in with the officials on that one. It'll be holding against Northwestern. So instead of uh, maybe a yard gain on the carry by Edwards, Michigan may uh, have a march it off for a five-yard loss, where they could decline and feel confident that they couldn't get the nine needed yards for the first down in the next three plays. Northwestern, as we mentioned, has been shut out three times already this year. Their opener against Washington, then the very next week against Syracuse, they lost 34 0, 35 0. The Big Ten opener, successful for them as they knocked off Indiana. Bo Schembechler, of course, and his crew. Perfection so far in conference play this year. And there, I'll give you a story of what Bo has done career wise in his head coaching position. You know, last, you know, last week, Ray, it was funny. Bo won his 100th conference game, and he did it in his uh, 15th season. And Woody Hayes took 21 seasons, and Stagg took like 25 seasons. And Bo said, "All that means is I'm getting older." <laughs> First down at 19. Little draw play coming right up the middle, and getting close to the 12-yard line. Acres in there to make the tackle. You know, Ray, we talked about Michigan's linebacking problems and the injuries, and there you see Jeff Acres, number 33 reading the draw very well. He, he saw the quarterback drop, but he didn't leave his position. That's one of the keys. Linebackers have to stay home until they make sure that a back does not have the ball. Akers did that time and was there to meet the draw after a very short game. Akers, a junior out of Lynn, Massachusetts. He's got a brother playing football out of UCLA. Wob tried to find somebody. He's going to be brought back into the end zone, but the official says, nope. I'm going to roll it dead at the one-yard line. So instead of a safety for Michigan, a little bit of a break for the Wildcats. Hassel in there to wrap them up. And uh, one of the reasons is, is that Michigan had a, a three, five-man coverage coming outside with a blitz from Tom Hassel, and Hassel pulls him in the end zone. Now, that's a judgment call by the official on where he was actually down. The official says forward progress was in the field of play. So they don't get the safety out of it, although it could have gone either way. I think if the uh, call were, well, I was going to say if it were in Northwestern, it would have been safety. That doesn't work either. <laughs> Third and 29. Bob not afraid to stand in there to pass. Look out. How are we going to rule 
this one at the goal line or a safety? He's going to rule it at the goal line again. The Michigan thought they had two. And it's going to be placed down at the two-inch line. Kevin Brooks in there to make the hit on Schwab. Do you think maybe, Ray, the officials out here feel a little bit tired for the Wildcats? I'd say so. Both of those calls, were, they're both judgment calls. Yeah. You really can't, you can't complain that much, but they're both awful close. Could have gone either way. So it's now fourth down and still 29. And a couple of close plays at the goal line. Big plays by Michigan. Kid hasn't got much room in the end zone. Cooper, lots of room at the 45 of Northwestern. Kid gets it away. A beautiful spiral punt driving Cooper back to his own 42. Begins to circle near side of the field. Try to get outside. Finally run out of bounds at the Northwestern 44-yard line. Beautiful punt. So time has run out to end the opening quarter. And the score, the Wolverines 14, the Cats of Northwestern nothing. Billy Ray Perkins, for one brief moment, played left field in the majors. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. When things are going Stroh Light, right. a great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Looks like great a stroll like night. Out the left field when nothing can go wrong. Looks like a stroll like night. When Burger King presents the McDonald's. An unusual interview. Is it true all of you switched to Burger King? Yes! Yeah. How come? Bacon double cheeseburger. Plain broiling. The Whopper. French fries. Being McDonald's, you must take a lot of ribbing. Yes, we can't show our faces anywhere anymore. Would you advise everyone to switch to Burger King no matter what their name is? You bet. You bet. Okay, America. Now when you switch to Burger King, you can tell them... The McDonald's thank you. you. Maybe you don't think you can give more to the torch drive this year. Times are tough. But perhaps you'd understand why we need your help if you saw things from a different point of view. Maybe you would listen to our needs if you couldn't hear. And you might see how much we need your help if you lost your sight. Because although times are tough for you, they could be a lot tougher. So please, won't you give generously? The standards of the, both the students and the teachers have dropped. Teachers can't teach. Students don't learn. The accusations fly. Our schools are under attack. We're trying our best to get people our money's worth. And that money is going to have to be spent more wisely. And teacher burnout is a problem. Computers are expected to play a major role in the resurrection of our schools. Our school system works in Japan. Can we make it work again here? Find out on Making the Grade, a Channel 7 Action News close-up starting Monday at 6. Well, that punt returned by Cooper, Orville Nevels of Northwestern, shaken up. He has been helped from the field, actually uh, shaken up right at the Michigan bench, and now has to go to the far side of the field. A little assistance back to his bench on the far side. So our second quarter getting underway at Michigan with great field position at the Northwestern 43-yard line. First and 10, Michigan leading 14 and other. Kerry Smith in there for Michigan, set in that wing back position. And Steve Smith on the rollout. And Bean makes the reception. Close to the 30 yard line should be enough for a first down, but we got a flag down. Michigan came on that instance with that counter look. Michigan penalized. Illegal receiver downfield. And Michigan came looking with that counter play, but they faked it, which was supposed to hold those people inside. But Northwestern, give them credit, did a good job defensively of getting outside and forcing Steve Smith uh, to throw that ball. I think he wanted to run. Vince Bean did come open. He threw it, but the ball is, is nullified because of the penalty, and Michigan also loses the down. Five yards, march to go against the Wolverines to make it second and 15. A little side note on Vince Bean. Now 10th place in the all-time receiving core of Michigan. And started the day with 833 yards, career receptions, and yardage. 
Not too far from Ron Kramer, who finished up with 880. Steve Smith going to the air. And that one intended for Bean. Bean almost looked as if he had sort of slowed down on his pattern after he played the cut coming across at the 25-yard line and Smith firing over his head. Well, Vincent was running a pattern that was like a post pattern, but he didn't run it deep because he saw Northwestern secondary way back there. So instead of running toward the end zone, he adjusted his pattern back more flat across the middle of the field. Steve threw it deeper like the normal post position. And he had Markley also very open on the right side. Third and 15, and behind being that time, covering on the play was Charles Plant, the cornerback. But that one a couple of yards behind Vince. Incomplete, it'll be fourth down and 15, and a punt situation for the Wolverines. And that means that Don Brackett will check in with his first punt of the afternoon. And with this first punt, he needs only a couple of yards to be the leader career punting wise at Michigan, the all-time leader. So pass John Anderson's mark of 7,108 yards. Back there in the single safety, Eric Anderson. A fair catch is signaled for. Wow! At the two-yard line. Now you got to think. Signal for fair catch. Let it bounce. It may go in the end zone. Instead, Wildcats at their own two will take a timeout. 14 nothing, Michigan. Pontiac has created a driver's car the whole family can enjoy. Pontiac 6000. Enjoy the styling. Enjoy the room. Enjoy the handling. Pontiac 6000. Enjoy. The front wheel drive 6000. Only from Pontiac. We build Will you give more to the torch drive? Oh, I'd like to give more to the torch drive, but the cost of living's killing me. Give more? We can hardly afford his college. Look, I'm just getting back on my feet after the recession. Well, it's been a bad year. The tax hike, the mortgage, now both kids need braces. If you give excuses, what will we give? Now more than ever, the torch drive needs your support. So please give generously. about that decision by Eric Anderson to make the fair catch at the Northwestern two-yard line. So the Wildcats in the hole again at their own two. Line of scrimmage. First and ten. Ricky Edwards on that pitch out. Might have got a yard at the most. And closing up quickly on that left side, the Michigan defense with Nate Rogers leading the way. You know, Ray, Northwestern is, is such a passing team. They'll throw out of here. We saw them almost get a safety twice, and I won't be surprised at all to see them throw. They'll throw anywhere on the field. Uh, the thing that they'll do, though, here in this situation is they'll throw that safe pass, try to find a back out of the backfield or a tight end over the middle. No gain on that carry by Edwards, so it's second and ten. Rob trying to find somebody open. He couldn't do it, forced to run. And gets over his own five-yard line, but a pressure being applied by Michigan, and Tom Hassel certainly leading the way over there. Michigan defensively have done a great job forcing Schwab out of the pocket, but pass defense is a combination of rush and secondary play. The thing that I think is the most impressive is that they're covering John Harvey extremely well, and he's one of those guys that is a quick receiver. He gets open in a hurry. Schwab usually only takes a three-step drop and then throws. He hasn't been allowed to do that because Michigan defensively has been in their face. Mike Hammerstein is out there playing at the left defensive tackle, one of Michigan's best pass rushers. Fullback coming to the carry. Just about the line of scrimmage and nothing going. As again, good coverage by Tommy Hassel. Sliding outside to make the stop. Hassel's been doing it all year long, and 
when you run Hassel's side, you're just not going to be successful. A lot of people have tried it this year, and we've called Hassel for many, many tackles. He is just one tough outside linebacker that refuses to be blocked. Northwestern, 11 carries so far in this ball game for roughly six yards. That's been their story on the ground, and they come in this ball game as far as their rushing ninth in the conference. John Kidd, certainly one of their most valuable players as a punter. He gets a lot of work. Well, he does. <laughs> His third punt of the afternoon on a fourth and six from his end zone. Cooper at his 45. Good return by Cooper. Now a flag goes down at the 49 yard line of Northwestern. And Cooper coming back close to the Wildcats 42 on that return. So we'll wait for the call. Cooper coming in this ball game this afternoon, averaging just about 14.7 per carry on those punt returns. So I had a great week against Michigan State last week and their great punter Ralph Mojienko and we've got an illegal block by Michigan and I think they caught Jim Scarcelli out there number 85 coming down and blocking a guy holding on can't do that that's penalty especially on punts but one of the things that Michigan might have done because we talked about John Kidd and that he is one of the conference's best punters we saw Ralph Mosienko last week, and it was an idea that they wanted to. Here's the block by Scarcelli. There you see it, number 85. Just when Cooper went by him, there was a block in the back. That is an illegal play, and that cost Michigan a good return by Cooper. So the ball is marked back now at the 46-yard line of Michigan, first and 10. We've got 12 minutes and four seconds to go in the first half. Michigan on top by a score of 14 to nothing. They came in this ball game favored any place from 40 to 49 points against the Wildcats. Kerry Smith with the ball. And Kerry Smith with a huge area to run in. And gets the first down, run around to 42. Well, I dug James on the right side of that line. Just caved in Northwestern. Watch 73. You see him. Uh, you can't really see him on that one. But anyway, there was a huge hole right over Doug James Holes. He just buried their defensive tackle and actually blocked him into a linebacker. So he took two guys out with one block. Not shabby at all. That's the brand setter stuff. Oh, well, no, Ray, I don't know where to go that far. Bob on that tackle. He's a young man with mentioned from Detroit. His father used to play football up at Michigan State, the leading tackler. Kerry Smith on the carry. And that time not finding too much room to run. Moyer, the linebacker on the outside on that left side, coming over to make the hit. Kerry made the wrong cut going outside. The hole opened up back inside. Uh, Kerry made that cut outside right into where Moyers was being blocked. So no uh, gain on that carry. T uh, second down at 10. We saw Sim Nelson, number 95, the left in out of that huddle. He's lined up on the left side. Now we got a whistle. And the officials converge. A little bit of a problem down there. Down box on one side of the field had not been turned over. And they are indicating now it's a down box on the Michigan side. The near side of the field, it's second down. So it's second down at 10. And we'll start it all over again. We mentioned referee Tom Quinn, Ed Hassel is the umpire, the headlinesman Wayne Meese, line judge is Don Langlo. Otto Fools, is the field judge. Jeff Destefano is the side judge. Back judge is Mike Nevin. Wing back right this time for Michigan. And uh, going in motion now is Dan Rice, the fullback. Reception made by Kerry Smith and uh, breaks across the 35 after they took the pass from Smith. He's shy of a first down by about a yard, maybe two. Straight screen pass, Ray, and a good play to call in that situation. Your second down, you got long yardage, you're looking downfield, the defense is looking at the same thing. You let some people through and then dump it out of here, and you got Humphreys and Dixon in front. Both of them get blocks and allow Smith to get good yardage. Now they're looking at a third and two situation. Good call. Carthens comes in to join uh, Sim Nelson for a double tight end. Third and a couple. Kerry Smith has the first down close to the 27 yard line. Smith who came into this ball game tonight averages just about a 5.3 on every carry that he has. Now, the offensive line doing a good job. Look at 64 and 76. Humphreys 
and Diorio both come upfield taking linebackers and the hole is there after uh, Dixon gets the good block on the middle guard and the tailback reads that and breaks off that block and then both guards come upfield and just tie up those linebackers and it's up to the back to make the cut. Torkelson getting credit for the tackle. He's the interior linebacker. Steve Smith following some pretty good blocking and picks up some yardage down to the 20 yard line. But I'll tell you, he got a good block there from Valortis. He did a good job opening it up. And once again, the option is opening up inside. Watch Smith down the line of scrimmage. Sees the hole open up inside. Cuts inside the linebacker and Warriors. Now Steve cuts it outside here again into most of the traffic. If he cuts it back up inside toward the referee, toward the umpire, he might have had a lot more room. He got seven yards on the carry, so it goes second down and three for the Wolverines. At the 20-yard line of Northwestern, Michigan leading 14 to nothing here in the second quarter. And it's Rice on the carry, pulling his way down to the 15 and has plenty of room for the first down. So young Dan Rice doing the job going straight ahead. And the other people doing such a good job is the people up front, right? And I've just noticed there that they're not double teaming that middle guard. They're letting Tom Dixon, their All-American center, handle him one-on-one -on, -one on certain plays. And they're double teaming with the guard and tackle outside on the defensive tackle. And that's putting a lot of pressure on that center to one-on-one -on -one block that middle guard. Bean wide to the left. Mark Ray wide to the right. He's the flanker on that right side. Kerry Smith, the 10, 5, close to the goal line. He'll be shy about one yard. Brought down finally at the one-yard line of Northwestern. Kester in there along with Bobbitt to make the desperation tackle. Good play again, blocking inside, trap play. Smith gets the ball, sees the hole open up back inside, and there's lots of room through the line of scrimmage. And when your safety is making tackles, you know, on the goal line, in a goal line type defense, you got trouble. And when Kester has to come up and make the hit, you know that the offensive line has opened up some big holes. Well, they've got trouble again here at the one yard line. Here is Kerry Smith. Oh, he took a good shot, did not get in there. And leading the way was Gerald Wolf to make the first hit on him. Kerry Smith trying to get in for a TD and Bobbitt also in there. Bobbitt, by the way, the leading tackler last year and again the leading tackler this year for Northwestern. You know, I'm impressed with the Northwestern defense that we've seen them on the goal line, Ray. On a couple of occasions, they have hung tough. Now, they're down 14-0 and Michigan has dominated, but they get on that goal line and that defense hangs in there. They're not giving up here. They're playing real hard and I think that's a credit to Dennis Green and the kind of character kid he has on the Northwestern squad. And you know, he's in the midst of rebuilding a program that was down lower than anything you could find, but he's done a good job. Steve Smith, all daylight for that one yard. So Steve Smith with his second touchdown of the afternoon. One yard off. And Michigan going on top, 20 to nothing here. Yep. No matter what age, we got a Michigan fan here who says, keep it going. Now the play was run well because Northwestern once again loading up inside. Look at everybody loading up inside. Smith sees the end come in to take the pitch back. There's nobody outside to take him now. And when he saw that guy shoot by him, he said, no way, I'm getting in the end zone. He did. Michigan gets six. Bergeron. As that one goes through, almost blocked. Got a piece of somebody's hand, but enough momentum. Michigan going. 53 yards for that last score, and Lady now 21 to nothing. 7 21 to go in the second quarter. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond, and it's worth more than gold. I never was a company man. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. Here's to the man who finds something extra. Spro signature is something extra. You have our name on that. When I need to know, I tune to WWJ News Radio 95. News Radio 95. For all the news, anytime. News Radio 95. The one for all the news, all the time. The only one. But when I need to relax, it's beautiful FM 97. WJOI. FM 97 for easy listening any place. FM 97, the easy place to relax. The only one. WWJ News Radio 95, WJOI FM 97, the only two to turn to in Detroit. 
Well, definitely for Northwestern Wildcats, it's catch-up time already in this ball game, down by a score of 21 to nothing. And as Jim told you earlier, you can expect to see a lot of passing from Schwab, and he is going to have to really go to the air to try to get his ball club back into this one. Meanwhile, Schlopey all set to handle the kickoff again. Now, the last two offensive series Northwestern has had, the reason that Schwab hasn't been able to really play the game plan is because they've been tacked down inside their own end zone, and you just can't throw the ball out of there with Michigan with as much pressure as they've been putting on him. Edwards bringing this ball out. He was inside his own goal line by a couple of yards and finally forced out of the far side of the field with Hewlett leading the way at around the 24-yard line of Northwestern. So there's a story on a scoring drive, of course, that we told you on well, that last one for Michigan. Meanwhile, Northwestern starting their fifth drive, the line of scrimmage. This is their best field position coming up at the 24-yard line. They've been at the 20 twice, three times, and at the two-yard line on one occasion. Edwards and Cummings, the running backs, in there for the Wildcats. Schwab back to pass. A lot of pressure, and he loses that pressure. Carlton Rose was chasing him, and finally forced out of bounds. Maybe got a yard on that whole carry, covering him out of the field, and also in there to chase him out of bounds was Rodney Lyles, outside linebacker. Well, it gives Sandy Schwab a lot of credit to get out of this. Here comes the tackle, and nobody even touches Dave Meredith, number 96. I mean, he is in free and clear, and Schwab really shows his ability as a runner. Last week against Michigan State, Clark Brown didn't have this kind of mobility, and Michigan was able to come after him and know that he wasn't going to be able to scramble out of there. The story's going to be different today with Schwab. He's got those quick feet. Schwab getting about a half a yard on that carry. Now giving to his fullback, and his fullback going straight ahead. That was uh, Ignatowitz on his first carry of the afternoon. Stopped in there by Jeff Akers. Here's a, quite a story on Akers, a young man that we talked about earlier, Lynn, Massachusetts. He started the season as an interior linebacker, then when that core got a little thin because of injuries, moved to practice on the outside, and this week back on the inside. So got an education in a hurry here under Bo Schembechler. Well, they've had to do that because of the injuries. They've got outside guys moving inside, and for four linebacker positions, they've got about six healthy people to play them. It's a, it's a tough shot. Well, that last carry, give the carry to Cummings. He remains in there at fullback. And Schwab chased by Rogers and finally hauled down by Nate Rogers on a good defensive player as he was slicing in there and finally yanked the quarterback down. Michigan's running three different down people in there. Mike Hammerstein is one of them. Nate Rogers is another one. And up on top is uh, Dave Meredith. You see Meredith holds him inside. That's Rodney Lyles, rather. He keeps him from breaking the taint, forces him back inside where Rogers is coming from. That's the kind of pass rush you like. Outside to keep him inside, and then when he starts to come up inside the pocket, that middle guard's got that area to take it. Second sack by the Wolverine defense this afternoon. John Kidd in there to handle a punt back at his own seven-yard line. Cooper waiting for that ball at his 35. Now a back up close to his 28-yard line. And gets to the 34. And up into the there. That time by Donaga, the uh, guard, but also played on the special team. 21 nothing. Michigan on top here with 424 to go. Kodak presents a breakthrough in color photography for the best color pictures ever from Kodak. A film for detailed color. A film for vibrant color. A film for fast action color. Even a film for low light color. New Kodakolor VR, 100, 200, 400, 1000 speed films. Millions of Americans are so intimidated by our legal system, they don't get a lawyer even when they need one. At Hyatt Legal Services, we make getting an experienced lawyer as easy as coming to one of our convenient offices. You can discuss your problem with an attorney for only $20. And we have standard fees for cases like divorce, bankruptcy, and wills. At Hyatt Legal Services, personal service at reasonable fees is how we make the system work for you. Call the Hyatt office nearest you or 756-4000 for an appointment. 
I'll take a correction of that time remaining in the second quarter. Make it 524. First and 10 Michigan, Steve Smith. Firing over the head of his tight end. Intended for Sim Nelson. And Smith having a little bit of a problem with his passing today. He is overshot, overthrown about three of his receivers so far this afternoon. So far, a total offense in this ballgame. Michigan with a total of 155 yards, Northwestern with 23 yards, and all of those yards by Northwestern in the air. That means it's 21 nothing. Wolverines leading in this ball game. And Michigan has used 29 plays against 20 plays for Northwestern. Rick Rogers now moves into that wingback position on the right side. Steve Smith is knocked around, loose ball, and Humphreys in there to grab it up. For Michigan, Cruz in there to make the hit on Steve Smith. One of the reasons that Smith didn't get the ball off was the coverage in the secondary. First of all, Cruz comes around and beats Doug James and Banks. These are the it's interesting. Watch the blockers. They don't notice the ball. They're still blocking for the pass, and it's James who has to come back. And that's great concentration by those Michigan offensive linemen. They're continuing to block for that pass, even though the ball's on the ground. Give James credit, as Jim told you, for the fumble recovery in the place of Humphreys. Steve Smith now on the draw up the middle of 40 and uh, losing his footing. And right around the 42 yard they line, they may give him to the 43. He wanted to make a cut, and that's when he lost his footing. That was the third down of 14. Well, the, the play was there so well. Everybody takes everybody outside. Northwestern has come outside on their rush. Now Smith's got a lot of room inside with two linemen in front of him. And he just loses his footing. And he knows it, and he's upset about it. Al Michigan's all-time putter, as far as yardage is concerned, for a career is in there, Bracken. And now, going back to handle his putter, Eric Anderson. Now bouncing to him, picks it up at the five, and buried at the five-yard line. Oh, Mr. Anderson's got to be thinking, but first, I get a fair catch, and I end up with my arms at the two this time. He gets a Michigan bounce. I pick it up, and I'm squashed, and Armstrong and Perriman are in there to lead the way for Michigan. We've got a timeout with 3.53 to go in the second quarter. It's all Michigan. This bartender's next big league pitcher and loves to serve fire-brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. From one beer lover to another strobes. Extraordinarily beautiful skin begins overnight with overnight success by Cody. So advanced, it helps remove old dry skin cells as emerging younger cells replace them. Overnight success actually helps diminish the aging look of drying skin while you sleep. Its effectiveness has been clinically proven. Discover overnight success tonight. Wake up to younger looking skin. Now that's something to sleep on. Northwestern starting this one off at their own five-yard line. First and ten. Ball from his end zone and shooting high. The Cummins, his fullback. A little quick release, and he might have heard some footsteps coming in from the Michigan defense that time. Well, it was uh, Meredith on the outside taking an outside rush. Now, we saw the previous series that Northwestern had the ball. Michigan's two down tackles are rushing upfield. They do not want to allow Schwab to scramble to the outside. Then they come up through the middle and support with the middle guard and a linebacker staying home at taking away the scramble from Schwab. It's a uh, good defensive strategy by the Michigan down people. Schwab has been incomplete on his last three passes. He's now four for seven. That straight ahead carry by Edwards uh, just about got to the five yard line. And just over the five, and Al Central, the nose guard in there, the middle guard from Michigan to lead the way on the stop. Michigan is running a different tandem of three linemen in the game, the three down people. This time around, Kevin Brooks, Vince DeFelice, and Sinsich. In the last situation, it was Rogers, Hammerstein, and Meredith. So they're getting a lot of people in there. They're getting a lot of people a lot of experience. 
little look that time. You saw Michigan go on defense after they took a look at the formation employed by the Wildcats. Schwab eludes the safety up to this point, running for desperation, and gets across the goal line for the third time this afternoon to avoid that two-point safety out of the two-yard line. Rodney Lyle said, I'll wrap you up instead. I'm telling you, that young man, Sandy Schwab, under heavy pressure, is showing some real cool. Al Sinsic gets off his block and has him for a safety right here and just can't hang on. Now Schwab is just fighting to get out of the end zone. Makes a real nice cut right inside to get out of Vince DeFelice's uh, hands and then just dives out of the end zone to avoid the safety. He's done a good job today and under some serious pressure, Ray. Schwab may have not won the carry for nine times this afternoon, but he was forced to that time. He has a minus 13 yards on the ground. And he's ended up having to carry that ball and sack a couple of times. John Kidd. A wobbly kick that hits around the 40-yard line of Northwestern. Taken at the 49 of Michigan by Coopers. And now finds some running room on the far side of the field. And some great running that time by Cooper as he gets to the 29-yard line of the Wildcats. And John Kidd was the man who came up to make the final tackle on Cooper. And when your punter comes up there to make the tackle, usually he's the safety man in a punt formation. He's the guy that takes the last line of defense against the return. Cooper makes a great cut there inside. Now watch number four, Kidd. He comes up and Cooper runs an elbow and a forearm right through him. John Kidd's not used to that. He's used to standing back there and kicking it away and not getting involved in that action. Cooper back to the 28-yard line. That'll be the line of scrimmage for the Wolverines, the Northwestern 28-yard line. Steve Smith going to his one of his favorite receivers, and that's Vince Dean, who takes some punishment along the far sideline. And he is across the 20-yard line, close to the 19-yard line of the Wolverines. So Bean has his first reception. Nevels back in there to make the hit. Nevels was a player that was shaken up earlier. This is a play action. Everything's going left, and Bean throws it over the head of Sim Nelson, who's coming underneath, because he saw Vincent Bean just standing there. They were giving him five to seven yards of cushion to keep him from going deep. And Bean saw that and just stopped. That time, Steve Smith read it well. I'm sure Bo Schembechler was pleased and just stuck it in there for a nine-yard gain. Michigan needed a yard. That was for Bean was his 12th reception of the year. Close to 200 yards in those receptions. And here we go. Rick Rogers. He gave you a little thrill there. Starting at the 19-yard line and goes in for his second touchdown of the afternoon. Uh, I don't know who that safety was. We'll have to watch it on the replay, Ray, but that was the guy who got the thrill. Because Rodgers made a cut at about five yards away from him, and he just laid, let his shoes nailed to the deck. It's a straight draw play, play well blocked. The area, there's the move, and that, I think, was Dean Kester, the safety. You saw Kester take the fake, and Rodgers just turned around and went the other way. That's a great running back right there. That is a good move by a running back. When you're five yards away from a guy and make a move and force him to go down to the ground, you've done a job. Rodgers leading the way as far as touchdowns are concerned for Michigan. His eighth of the season, all on the ground. Bergeron out there to try for his fourth extra point of the afternoon with a minute and 15 to go in the first half. And he is four for four in the extra point department in this ball game, and that means that Michigan plays Northwestern now with 1.15 to go by a score of 28 to nothing. It's a classy running that time by Rodgers, and that's been the longest gallop of the afternoon as far as to get a touchdown. And Rodgers now on the carries for 71 yards, 10 carries, two touchdowns, and 71 yards. The other thing I think we've got to mention is Michigan's defense. They really have not allowed Northwestern to do anything. And I think the biggest surprise is, is that they have pressured Schwab as well as they have. All this season, Sandy Schwab has been able to throw the ball or at least get the pass off. This is the first game this season where he has been unable to throw. Now, they've made a lot of mistakes and they've thrown some interceptions in their previous games, but they've always been able to throw. Michigan's doing a good job forcing Schwab out of the pocket and not allowing him to throw, not allowing him to set up and find that quick receiver. And that's given Michigan the ball in great field position. It certainly has. They've had real tremendous field position. Meanwhile, Northwestern has had poor field position and actually got into Michigan territory only once in this first half, and that was on the 
opening series of downs after they got a couple of first downs. Well, a little slip down there by Coates. He wanted to go for the ball by the time that he regained his composure. That ball had hopped into the end zone to be brought out to the 20 yard line for the fourth time this afternoon for Northwestern. And you get an idea of what happened on that last scoring drive for Michigan. It took only 51 seconds. And add an assist to Evan Cooper on the punt return because he got it down there close. Michigan opened up by throwing a couple times real quick. Got that secondary wary of the deep pass. They come back with the draw play to Rodgers, and Rodgers puts a great move on Kester and hits over. He's in the end zone. Northwestern on the ground, 16 carries for a minus four yards. And that's why Schwab is going to the air. A little screen pass out that time. And Edwards on the reception end as he tried to do a little toe dancing there to find some daylight. And all he did was get back to the line of scrimmage. And Mike Mallory came over from his linebacker spot and made the hit. And again, Ray, that's the defense playing smart. They're reading what Northwestern and Dennis Green are trying to do. And they saw the screen pass coming, and Mallory was over there and ready. Edwards, the uh, leading receiver on this Northwestern team, came in this ball game with 41 receptions on the year, and a lot of them just like that, those little short passes. He is four for 10 yards this afternoon. Schwab again under pressure and firing and a good catch off the turf. Nope, they rule it that he trapped it. And that is a tight end, John Harvey. And getting a call that time from the side judge said, no, nope, you trapped that one. So it's incomplete. But again, we see the ability of Schwab to scramble out of some heavy trouble and just get that ball off. He's got like a slingshot arm. They're coming with a bit of a blitz. 96 Meredith goes outside. Inside comes the end, Lyles. He almost has him. But Cummings blocks him. Now watch. Just a little slingshot pass. Almost throwing it with his elbow. Uh, and Harvey uh, picked it up off on one bounce. Short hopped it. Now it's Western one of six on third down conversions this afternoon. They are 27% of third down conversions for the year. Down to 28 seconds. And Edwards picking up about five yards on that little pitch to him. That's about it. He looks a little tired already. Rodney Lyles in there to make the stop, and we get a timeout with 15 seconds remaining on that clock. It's Michigan calling for the timeout. It'll be fourth down and five when time comes back in. No, well, they... Michigan trying maybe to get a little time on the clock on this punt return and maybe one play. Well, they might try for a field goal here. Uh... I, th I think Bo wants to do as much as he can here in this first half and in the second half empty his bench and give some of the kids that he has that haven't had a chance to play a little time to play in Big Ten play in the second half. He's got two very, very tough games coming up against Iowa and Illinois, and I think he wants to give some of those first string kids a rest, make sure they don't get injured, give them almost, uh, you know, two weeks off in a sense, you know, even though they've only played the first half give them some time to get those injuries healed up, come in the second half with some of the younger kids, give them some experience so that if injuries do happen in the Iowa game or the Illinois game, those kids will have game experience. That Iowa game that Jim is talking about a week from the day right here at Michigan Stadium. It's homecoming, and we'll be looking for you. I hope that you'll be out here in Ann Arbor. If you can't uh, be here in person, we hope that you'll join us for our next telecast a week from this afternoon. And, of course, it'll be the Hawkeyes of Iowa, a very, very tough bowl for Michigan. And, <laughs> excuse me, even if you are here in person, you can watch the game on the replay along the Wolverine Sports Television Network Saturday nights. Check your local listings. You can see it twice. You have a weekly date with a fellow by the name of Shem Beckler, too. <laughs> That's right. We'll talk about that in a moment. Fourth and five. Kid on a punt. It's a beauty. Cooper circling underneath it and signals for the fair catch right around the 24 yard line so seven seconds left on the clock and let's talk about that Michigan replay show Jim I think this week we're going to talk a lot about the following two weeks uh, I think this game is pretty much well in hand right now one of the keys I think to Bo and what we will talk about on Michigan replay is he rides the kids sometimes a lot harder during a game week when they're playing a Northwestern than he does when they're playing in Iowa. And he wants to get something out of this game. He just doesn't want them to come in here and go through the motions. I think that's what we're going to talk to him about, whether he got that today. Rick Rogers on the carry, the tailback. Got about five yards to the 30, and that should take care of the first half. Officially, it's over now. And so after the first 30 minutes of play, it's the Wolverines of Michigan, 28. 
The Wildcats of uh, Northwestern. Nothing. The great cars of Europe priced far out of reach until now. Renault presents the road to affordability. Renault Alliance, Motor Trend's 1983 Car of the Year, with sedan comfort for five and their luggage. Fuel efficient, fuel injected, European technology that's affordable. 59.59. Renault Alliance, built in America. The one to watch, the one to watch, the one to watch. Renault. The standards of the, both the students and the teachers have dropped. Teachers can't teach. Students don't learn. The accusations fly. Our schools are under attack. We're trying our best to get people our money's worth. And that money is going to have to be spent more wisely. And teacher burnout is a problem. Computers are expected to play a major role in the resurrection of our schools. Our school system works in Japan. Can we make it work again here? Find out on Making the Grade, a Channel 7 Action News close-up starting Monday at 6. Save your car's metal paint fabric. Get the Z-Bart Protection Package, now $100 off. Z-Bart Rust Protection, proven against rust out, has a lifetime limited warranty. Z-Bart Paint Protection fights fade out, eliminates waxing. Z-Bart Interior Protection fights fabric wear out from stains, soils. Save your car from rust out, fade out, wear out with the Z-Bart Protection Package, $100 off. The factory makes it first, we make it last. Z-Bart. See the white pages for the Z-Bart dealer nearest you. Hi, this is Dave Bing. I spent my entire career guarding against the most dangerous shooters in the game. Sometimes I came out on top. Other times I wasn't as fortunate, but I kept on battling. Today, I'm helping guard against something far more dangerous, cancer. We've made great strides in the fight against this dreaded disease, but we still need a team effort to eliminate it once and for all. We need your support. Contact the Michigan Cancer Foundation at 833-0710. Let's all do our part to make cancer a thing of the past. Time at the University of Michigan, 28 nothing. The Wolverines on top. Everything has gone Wolverine way, and nothing right for Northwestern. Well, Northwestern came out and on their first drive held the ball a little bit, did some good things passing, and I think maybe woke Michigan up a little bit. Offensively, the Wolverines have been dominant, mostly again as we thought, right on the ground. 5:28, the first score came. 5:28, that is to go in the first quarter. And once again, Michigan only used a couple passes in their opening drive. Then they got the ball to Rick Rogers right over the middle, and he just powers into the end zone. Northwestern's been pretty sticky on the goal line, but that's the culmination of a long drive. The second touchdown, we look at Northwestern's linebackers, and they're filling real hard and strong. But the hole opens up outside. Now, Moyers makes a hit on Steve Smith, but Smith has got great strength for the little guy that he is, and he's able to get into the end zone, and it's 14 to nothing. Then Michigan continue to drive the football. They're again on the one-yard line, mostly on the ground. That's what they've done all season. And against Northwestern, they're a little bit weak. On the option, Smith sees the pitch back taken. There's nobody in to cover him. He goes in easily on the option. And then on the fourth touchdown, it's a draw play. Michigan came first and second down through passes. Northwestern skated out of there on the draw. Here's the great move right there by Rodgers on Dean Kester. He just left him nailed to the deck. Rodgers goes in. It's been all Michigan on offense, all on the ground. Northwestern's got to do something offensively to keep the ball away from Michigan. And I think in the second half, we'll see them try to give Sandy Schwab more time to throw and throw those little short passes over the middle. They've been going to their backs in the flats. That's not working. He's got to try to get the ball downfield. And while I talk about what Northwestern hopes to do against Michigan. I would think it would be very difficult at this time at halftime for Dennis Green to continue to try to make believers out of his young men. I think they're pretty much, as they used to say, great announcer here for Michigan. The Northwestern Dobbers are a little down right now. I think Michigan, though, will have an opportunity to show some of their young players, which is a great opportunity for them to get some experience in Big Ten play. Second half, not too far away. Don't you go away. Will you give more to the torch drive? Oh, I'd like to give more to the torch drive, but the cost of living is killing me. Give more? We can hardly afford his college. Look, I'm just getting back on my feet after the recession. Well, it's been a bad year. The tax hike, the mortgage, now both kids need braces. If you give excuses, what will we give? Now more than ever, the torch drive needs your support. So please give generously. Hi, I'm Don Foss. 
People think us used car dealers are obnoxious fast talkers. Well, that hurts. I sell quality used cars for as little as $99 down, and I can guarantee low-cost financing. But do I get any respect? No. But I'm not mad. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. A great deal on this little beauty. What a cream puff. And I'll throw in these leopard skin seat covers, this vegetable slicer. These Don Foss used cars. Grand River north of seven miles. Grasset north of nine. These bicentennial mud flaps. Let's compare this chicken, now holding the title, with the challenger. Church's fried chicken. Church's chicken is bigger. They use a bigger chicken and cut into fewer pieces. Then Church's cooks those big, tender, juicy pieces, light, crispy, and golden, right before your eyes. Kentucky Fried doesn't. Church's gives you two big pieces for this low price. Kentucky Fried doesn't. Mm. Church's may be the challenger today, but I say we're looking at the new champ. Now save 40 to 60% on eyeglass frames with the purchase of prescription lenses at the optical department at Sears. Choose your frames from one of three collections from our entire line of designer and fashion frames. Now at special prices. Collection 1, $12.95. Collection 2, $19.95. Collection 3, $29.95. Choose your frame. Choose your price at the optical department at Sears. You can trust us, you know that we care. The optical department at Sears. The second half of University of Michigan football is brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. By National Steel Corporation, national driving for number one in quality, delivery, and price. And by Republic Airlines, nobody serves our republic like Republic. Northwestern to start the second half of the kickoff. That will be coming from John Duvick. And for the first time for the 1983 season, the University of Michigan will use a young man who has been injured to take the kickoff. Tom Wilcher, on the left of your screen, number 27, the young man from Detroit Central, seeing his first action of the 1983 season. Kerry Smith is his running mate down there at the goal line. So Wilcher, with great speed, takes it at the three-yard line for his first contact of the year and brings it back to the 25-yard line of Michigan. Nice to have that young man back in action. Yes, it is. He had to undergo serious knee operation after an injury in track season. He injured his knee doing the long jump. Now, here are the halftime statistics. And, Ray, the most surprising thing is the time of possession. Northwestern has actually had the ball longer than Michigan has. But the problem is the one turnover and the poor field position by Northwestern has really helped the Wolverines get that 28-0 lead. Same running backs that started this ball game. Garrett, the pullback. Rick Rogers, the tailback of that eye formation. Beans put wide to the left. That's Rick Rogers on a carry. Got five yards and drives it maybe around six yards up to the 31-yard line of Michigan. The Wolverines starting the second half with a 28 to nothing lead over the Wildcats. It's been all Michigan. Good decision by Rogers there to cut that ball back up inside. Everything was closed up outside. Did a good job on the cutback. Second down and three. So give seven yards on that carry for Rick Rogers. And again, Garrett will be his fullback. Steve Smith has gone all the way at the quarterback position. We noticed at halftime that young Mr. Harbaugh was warming up. Being wide to the left, Smith rolling out, keeps that ball, has the first down, lots of daylight, and down into Northwestern territory, run out of bounds at the 46-yard line of the Wildcats. Great blocking at the point of attack. One of the keys to the option play is getting outside the end, Ray. And Steve Smith came down the line of scrimmage. And look at the defensive end. He comes inside, and Stephon Humphreys logs him inside. Now Smith is wide open. A block by Clay Miller on Bobbitt, the inside linebacker, and Smith's off to the races. But the key again, logging that end inside and giving Smith the opportunity to cut it upfield. First to 10 for the Wolverines. This time it's Garrett on the carry. The fullback trying to get to the 40-yard line, down at the 41. And that time the tackle was in there by Gerald Wolf. Michigan is continuing here in the second half, much the same thing they were doing in the first half. The blocking up front is outstanding. Look at the whole left side of the line caves in Northwestern. And Eddie Garrett had a huge hole to run through. 
and he got four or five yards on the carry, and that's just good blocking up front by those young men. Garrett on the carry now has carried for three times for a total of eight yards. Smith, Steve Smith, nine carries for 58 yards in this ball game. Pitch out now to his tailback, Rick Rogers. Has the first down and goes out of bounds at around the 31 yard line of Northwestern. Rogers again showing some good footwork and making that cut wide. And a good play selection. And you see Rogers limping a little bit. He's had a little bit of an ouchy knee. And I think that's hurting right now on that cut. But here Steve Smith comes down. Now Northwestern forces him to pitch. But that's why the option is such a beautiful play. There you see, I think, his knee on that cut just kind of popped out a little bit. I think that's injured, but all Rodgers is still in the game. Rodgers has carried 13 times for a total of 95 yards. He stays in there at the tailback position. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Fullback going straight ahead. Garrett crosses the 30 to the 29-yard line of Northwestern. Wolverines have pretty well dictated what they wanted to do this afternoon. Whether they wanted to pass, and many times Steve Smith has been a little strong on his passes. Bo Schembechler has got to like the running game, and now Rick Rogers has come over to the bench. Kerry Smith is into the game at tailback for the Wolverines, and I would suspect that we'll see more option football here because opening the game, and they're opening the second half, they've been very successful with it. Second down and eight for the Wolverines, set to 29 of the Wildcats. And Steve Smith, he likes to roll out and keep that ball, picks up a couple of yards, brought down by the defensive tackle, Keith Cruz. We mentioned early in our telecast today that Cruz regarded as the best down lineman of the Wildcats on defense. And we saw the option play work twice in this drive already. The reason it worked because that tackle was blocked down inside. The reason that play didn't go is because Keith Cruz, their defensive tackle, didn't get blocked and he came up to make the tackle on Smith before he got to the defensive end. Instead of two yards, make it just one yard on that carry. And uh, we'll give it third and seven. Wolverines with a couple of tight ends in there and Nelson and Carthens. Out to carry Smith complete. Trying to bust his way for a first down close to the 21 yard line. That's where he had to go to get the Wolverine first down. Had a little bit of the linebacking core of Northwestern that time with Morgan and also the tackle Cruz in there again. Keith Cruz did a good job that time because he was on the back side of the play and Cruz was blocked pretty well by Clay Miller but got back and reacted to the ball well. Right now the officials would like to bring in that chain to see if the Wolverines got a first down or they did not. And one of the few times if not the first time they've used the chain today to check on a first down situation. About a foot away from the first down. What are we going to do? See the pullback carry on this one? I don't know. I, I think we might see an option coming this way, Ray. Uh, the only reason I say that is because Northwestern will play this goal line uh, and, and really log everything up inside. That allows Michigan to get outside pretty quickly. I think we might see the option, and they can go either way now because they're balanced both ways with two tight ends, Carthens being a wingback. And they start Carthens' motion this time, needing about a foot for the first down. Rick Rogers tripped up and then trying to stretch his way to the 20-yard line to see if he got the first down. The defense where they're going to rule that his knee hit Moyer and Cruz in there to make the stop on Rogers, And we may get the uh, yardsticks again. To again get a second measurement on this. Very close to the first down this time. Well, Michigan allowed penetration at the point of attack, and on a play where you give the ball to the tailback deep in the backfield, you cannot allow penetration at the line of scrimmage. And Michigan's offensive line on that occasion did. I don't know whether they got it. If they did, it's all up to Rodgers. Northwestern cheering, and it's Northwestern's ball. Michigan did not make it. And Bo Schembechler not too happy where that ball was spotted. And you don't think he's in this ball game? Holy cow. I mean, they may have a 28-0 lead, but opening the second half, the man wants the first down. He wants another touchdown. He doesn't feel safe, I don't think. I think he wants to see his offense do well and play well. And on that occasion, they miss blocks. They make mistakes. Well, I don't think necessarily it's for this week, but it's more for next week. He doesn't want to see them lose concentration going into the big games of the season. Exactly right. Pitch out to Edwards of Northwestern. Trying to get to the line of scrimmage. And just about getting there, and that's it. 
boy, that left side really beating the offensive line of Northwestern in a hurry and really moving into the backfield of Northwestern. And another injury on the field for Michigan. We take a look at the sidelines. Dennis Green, the head coach at Northwestern, last year's coach of the year after winning uh, three games. And the injury is to John Lott, a defensive cornerback. So once again, the injury bug crops its head. Well, while well, they work on Lott, let us take a time out with a score in the third quarter. Michigan 28, Northwestern nothing. The company said they had plans for me. Said I was crazy to throw it away to train horses. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. Glad I had my own plans. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. Steve Garagiola, seven uh, in your life. All right, go ahead. You know, kids with diabetes don't have to sit on the bench. They can and should lead active, healthy lives. Just make sure you and your child know the warning signals. Headache, dizziness, loss of energy. These diabetic symptoms can be controlled with the right diet and exercise. To learn more, call your American Diabetes Association. Keep your kid in the game. All right, come on, bring it in. The pitching back John Lott was assisted to the Michigan bench to be shaken up on that last play. And a close up that time of the young senior, Masri, Ohio, has done a whale of a job and has one interception in this ball game. Hewlett checks into that defensive backfield in the place of Lott. Second down and nine. They're trying to get a little screen out there over the middle, a quick dump pass. And the results, you see the flags flying all over. Dropping down at the 15-yard line. Boy, Michigan really working in a hurry and a call going against Northwestern. Michigan coming with a blitz that time. And again, I think the key is the pressure on Sandy Schwab. Take a look. The offensive line has got to take a bunch of people, and Kevin Brooks just comes right through. Nobody, nobody even touched him. And Schwab, Schwab threw the ball to his center. And I do not think... I'm not mistaken, Ray. The last time I checked, he's an ineligible receiver. Ah, uh, for many years. <laughs> so that means that John Yale, young man from Glencoe, Illinois, the center, unless they move him to the outside and let the officials know that he is going to be a receiver. At that time, he was up over the ball. Really hadn't even turned around, just trying to put it on his num numerals, number 50. 10.50 to go in the third quarter, Michigan leading 28 to nothing. Northwestern with possession of the ball. The penalty now makes it third down and 14 for the Wildcats. Schwab getting plenty of time on a deep drop this time and fires to Edwards. Edwards is wrapped up in there by Mike Mallory. So that play going no place. Again, that is that underneath pass they talk about. Northwestern, one of their favorite plays. But I think the important thing is, again, earlier this season we saw Michigan with that underneath coverage, and it wasn't that good. We saw the linebackers getting beat a lot against people like Washington and Washington State. But as John Kidd goes back to punch the ball to Evan Cooper, we've seen the defense in the last three or four games, and in particular in this game, because Northwestern does it a lot, covering those underneath people very well. You saw Cooper waiting back for Michigan. Cooper back at his own 38-yard line, waiting on the punt from Lott. Boy, he is a good, strong punter. Taking it to 28, comes right back up into his hands after the fumble. Cooper battles his way to the 35, and then is abused at the 34, but they may say that his momentum kept him right at the 35-yard line. He was really hit. Had a little trouble handling that punt, but again, I'll say it, you really got to be impressed by Kidd's punting. John Kidd has done an extremely job, good job punting the ball. You can't blame John Kidd because he has done as well offensively for Northwestern or defensively rather in kicking them out of trouble. Uh, Cooper just had nowhere to go that time. Uh, the coverage on that long kick was very good by Northwestern. Rick Rogers back at a tailback. Michigan at the 30 yard line, the 35 rather, first and 10 and Rogers on that carry. Got a couple of yards bringing that ball up in between the tackle and guard position on the left side. 
As Jim had talked about that first half, what a job the offensive line of the Wolverines has done this afternoon. Absolutely. They just opened up big holes, and when Northwestern has come up and cheated to stop the run, Michigan has made the right call, gone outside with an option or gone to the pass. Well, you saw that Rodgers needs three more yards to have a 100-yard day. They fake to Rodgers, rolled out by Smith. And Dean just stayed in bounds, makes the reception at the 47-yard line of Northwestern. First down, Wolverine. That is a great catch by Vincent Bean. He went to the sidelines and just stood there. He did not move. Great concentration. The ball was actually thrown probably a yard out of bounds when it got to him. But he leaned out of bounds, keeping both feet in bounds, and made the catch. Good block by Eddie Garrett there on Cruz to allow Smith to break contain. But watch the catch and watch the feet of Vince Bean. Falling down, the ball probably out of bounds by a yard, and he still comes up with it. First and 10, Rick Rogers on the carry. Brought down right around a 42-yard line of Northwestern. Bob it in there to make a good tackle. The 100-yard day for that young man, Rick Rogers, out of Wayne Memorial High School. 15 carries and now a total of 103 yards in this game with 8.52 to go in the third quarter. Michigan leading 28 to nothing. Six yards on that last carry. Make it second down and four at the 41-yard line of Northwestern. And like it's done all season long, Northwestern's defense really getting a workout in the football game. On the field for a long, long time. Rogers! Knocked off his feet on a real hard hit. But not until he got to the 28-yard line. Great hit that time by Kenny Watkins. Kenny is a young man, by the way, out of Detroit Redford High School. A senior now at Northwestern. You know, I think Rick Rogers just tried to make too good a cut there. He planted that foot and tried to get away from the safety Watkins and cut to the right corner of the end zone. And watch, he just it looks like his knee just gives out right there trying to make the cut away and he just because he could have gone the distance he was behind everybody he just slipped up so back was Garrett he got the call going straight ahead on that wing back formation and Garrett going straight ahead flying down to the 25 yard line that's a good call by Michigan because with one back you're looking at a possible pass but Michigan comes back up inside, and you take a look at the block right there by Stephon Humphreys on Keith Cruz. And, Ray, that's what you call burying a guy. I I'm mean, not letting him up, either. <laughs> that's, right. that's what you call an offensive lineman that's an All-American block. Second down and six at the 24 of Northwestern. Kerry Smith takes it inside the 20, and Darren Morgan, the interior linebacker on the right side, making the hit on Kerry. Everybody happy down there? Great day for football, isn't it, Ray? Beautiful. Temperature perfect. This is just a beautiful afternoon. I'm really getting a bonus for this ball game after the last couple of days weather-wise around the state of Michigan. We came out for a look-see at the practice yesterday on a very wet, cold, and windy afternoon here at Michigan Stadium. Delightful today here in Ann Arbor. And delightful to have you along for our telecast. We hope that you'll uh, join us for next week's game. Homecoming at Michigan, the Hawkeyes of Iowa coming in. Third and one. Rick Rogers. Close to the 15. Moyer, outside linebacker, knocking him off his feet. Watkins on top of him. They'll mark it back to the 60. First down for Michigan. 6.42 to go in the third quarter. Rodgers and Garrett, the running backs. Double tight end that time. Passes behind B, makes the cut at the five yard line and Smith firing behind him, incomplete. Steve's had a tough time, I think, reading the passes today. Uh, I think that's what the problem is because it looks like he's thrown too early before the receiver has made the cut. On a couple of occasions, we saw him in the first half throw behind people. I think he's having trouble reading the cut, reading the pattern by the receiver. But we've seen him throw much, much better against Washington. He was right on target. I, I just think he's reading the coverages or reading the receiver's routes wrong. 
Second down on 10. Smith, of course, going ahead and pass is completed for a career mark and breaking the old mark held by Leach. That was a week ago. Still trailing Leach in attempt. Boy, a good sturdy carry that time from Garrett. Pulling his way down close to the five yard line of Northwestern. Great effort by Eddie Garrett. Great wow. effort by Garrett once. Uh, great effort by, uh, effort by Garrett once he got to the linebackers. Take a look. Watch how they come up to fill. And here's a block by Clay Miller on the outside linebacker. The inside linebacker is totally caved in by the whole offensive line. And then Garrett runs right by them and into the safety. Eddie doing a little better with his average on six carries a day for 25 yards. Start of the day. Doing pretty good on his average, 4.9. Slightly better today on those carries. Goal, first and goal for Michigan at the six-yard line. Rick Rogers trying to find some daylight moving outside, and no part of that because there was Kenny Watkins moving up in a hurry to make the stop. Well, you know, you watch Rick Rogers run, right? We saw him trip or slip or something on one run where he's down the middle, and on that play, made it cut outside. It, it just looks to me like something's wrong with the knee. He's it's just a little tender at this point, and he's not able to make that cut and continue with a full head of steam. I don't know. It, it must not hurt him. I just think that it's not a whole 100%. Kerry Smith came out of the game earlier with a little injury on his leg, but we've seen Rick do that a couple times. Second a goal up to five. And a toss to Rogers. Did he stay inbounds? They say nope. No touchdown. He was out of bounds at the two. Trying to slip in there on the near side of the field, but forced out of bounds. Again, Watkins forcing him out of bounds at the two-yard line. Michigan going to the option on the goal line, and it has been successful for them because Northwestern's so concerned about that fullback up the middle. Here it is. Steve Smith sees the, the end come up to support, and there you see the left foot out of bounds. And the referee made the good call on the two-yard line, but... Again, the option working against Northwestern down here when they knock on the door because they're so concerned with that play inside. Now they're loading up a little bit outside. So Michigan may go over the middle. Third and goal at the two-yard line. Steve Smith wants to go to the air. Yes! To Rice. Touchdown. To the fullback, Dan Rice. And Dan Rice has his first touchdown to the air this year, his third of the year, his first reception of the 1983 season. Well, they fake the running play with the fullback coming out toward the end, and they've run it well all season long. They've run it on the goal line, hand the ball to the tailback. That time they fake it, and they run the fullback out into the left. Looks like he's going to block cut inside the outside end and the tailback blocks him and then he comes wide open behind the linebacker Gwendling. Bergeron trying to make it five for five in the extra point department. Down and up and good. And with 5-0-3 to go in the third quarter. The Wolverines of Michigan leading the Wildcats of Northwestern 35 to nothing. You're looking at the two best reasons I take good care of my brakes. And why I go to Midas on a regular basis. Midas inspects brakes the right way. I pull the wheel. If anything needs doing, I know it gets done right. Some people say I'm overly cautious, but I don't think so. I just feel better going to Midas. Nothing but the best he's ever gonna do. Trust the Midas. On our next Good Afternoon Detroit, is it possible to have a career as a fashion designer right here in Detroit? Well, it's proving to be successful for one person. We'll show you what we mean. It's time to reap the fruits of the fall harvest, but what do you do with a bushel of apples to keep them fresh all winter long? Jim Oak shares a great idea. Your vacation plans were cut short because air travel is too expensive? Don't unpack your bags. Sylvia Glover shows you how you can still take to the skies. And Jackie has your astrological forecast. That's Good Afternoon Detroit, weekdays at 4 on 7. 35 to nothing, Michigan lady. It's been a busy afternoon for everybody on this Michigan ball club over Northwestern. It's been a busy week for my sidekick, Jim Cranston. Really enjoying in the Michigan program this afternoon. In the column, this I remember. Special memories by Jim. And congratulations on a fine article, Jim. And your doings on the football field and your thoughts about the University of Michigan. Slopey with a kickoff. Uh, sort of a trap play. <laughs> 
Now moving around and finally down at the 10-yard line, Tony Coates. Tony having trouble all the way. When we're talking about Jim here, I'd like to congratulate you on one other thing, and that, of course, is the Boys Bowl coming up tomorrow afternoon by Nursing Stadium over in Eastern Michigan. Honorary chairman, of course, is Jim Brandstetter. It'll be Detroit Catholic Central against Brother Rice. And, Jim, you've got a busy weekend, but congratulations all the things you're doing. Well, thank you very much, Ray. It's uh, fun to be involved in all of that stuff. It's be nice to be involved here as Michigan continues to dominate, going 65 yards in 11th place. Most all of it on the ground. The touchdown coming through the air and a pass to uh, the fullback by Steve Smith. 35 nothing. A little short pass out there that is intended for the fullback, Casey Cummings. And for the third time today, Casey has a little trouble holding on to that ball. Now the ball thrown a little bit early, too. And, and you got to wonder, right, you, you feel for Dennis Green because everything that he's done today, nothing has worked. And at this point, I'm sure he's just sitting there, and he's, he's seen it happen to him all year. I mean, he's been beaten up pretty badly by a number of different ball clubs, and it's just, he's got to sit there at this point in the game, trailing 35 nothing and having no field position and watching some guys drop passes and watching receivers take the ball on a bounce and kick it around and starting at your own 10-yard line. I mean, he's just got to be beside himself. Gidget check in at fullback when Cummings came out of there. Schwab on the run. Gets the first down. Gets to the 21-yard line. As Northwestern that time used a couple of tight ends in that formation of theirs. Tim Anderson to make sure that Schwab was down. Schwab comes out of here. It looks like it's almost a quarterback draw. And uh, Northwestern blocks it pretty well, but really it's Schwab that makes the play. He's got the ability to run the football. We saw him scramble some in the first half, and so far he has really been the only offensive weapon that Northwestern has had. Four wide receivers put wide now by Northwestern. Trying to go deep, but look out! Schwab hit from behind, a loose ball, now rule it down, close to the 24-yard line of Northwestern. Schwab just not getting enough time to get those receivers down deep enough to go to. Well, we talked about his quick drop. Now watch, it's just a three-step drop. But now Michigan comes right up into the middle, and there's Sincic, and there's Brooks coming from behind who knocks the ball free. The offensive line of Northwestern, five of them, just cannot block the three down linemen who are rushing for Michigan. It's as simple as that. And when you're a throwing team, if you don't allow your quarterback to have a little time to throw, you're going to be in some serious difficulty. You have a lot of credit to Kevin Brooks that time, swapping Swab at the 25-yard line. Now rolling out of the pocket, still looking for somebody. And he almost uh, went across the line of scrimmage when he released that ball for the second time this afternoon, but he completes one at the 30-29 yard line. We take a look at John Harvey coming back to the huddle. I, I think another thing that we haven't mentioned today that we should is that Harvey caught 17 balls against Michigan last year, and Michigan has really done a good job bottling him up at the line of scrimmage. They really haven't allowed him to get out into a pass pattern, and with the heavy rush they put on Schwab, it's, it's been amazing, and you can see the results. That they just haven't been able to do a thing on third down. They got third and one here. They're only one of eight. And the first time that they went after a third down conversion, they got it. I don't think they got it that time. Far side of the field. Again, the left side of Michigan's defense moving up quickly. And at the bottom of that pile, give a little more credit to a fellow by the name of Sinchit, who got out of his nose guard or middle guard position, moved quickly to his left to make the stop on Ricky Edwards. Fourth down and a short one yard. And Dennis Green is going for it, Ray. That'll be the second time that he shot dice on a fourth down and short yardage today was successful the first time. And that was on the first series of downs that Northwestern had. They needed only inches in the early stages of this first football game. Movement on the left side that time of Northwestern. And there was movement there. They might get a whistle against Northwestern for Jackson, a receiver, moving and offside. Yeah, and they'll send John Kidd in here now because it'll be fourth and six. And it looked like Northwestern wanted to go on a quick count. And you saw both the left tackle and the left end Jackson moving before the ball was snapped, anticipating that count, trying to catch Michigan off guard. And 
punch a little crease in there to allow it back to get through a hole. Never got off the ground, and now the Wildcats and John Kidd, who has been very impressive this afternoon, will be forced to punt. Kidd has been a busy man. And a busy man at the opposite end on the kicks by John Kidd, and you can see what he's done with that fine average today, coming in with better than 45 yards, is this fellow here, Evan Cooper. And he has been busy bringing him back, waiting at his Michigan 25-yard line. This one will not get to him. It'll hit at the 40 and roll out of bounds in front of Bo Schembechler and his Michigan players at the bench at the Michigan 39-yard line. 1.43 to go in the third quarter. Wolverine dominating 35 and other. Billy Ray Perkins, for one brief moment, played left field in the majors. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. When things are going Stroh Light, a great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Looks like great catch by the fan on the left field side. When nothing can go wrong. Looks like Stroh Light Light when we come along. Maybe you don't think you can give more to the torch drive this year. Times are tough. But perhaps you'd understand why we need your help if you saw things from a different point of view. Maybe you would listen to our needs if you couldn't hear. And you might see how much we need your help if you lost your sight. Because although times are tough for you, they could be a lot tougher. So please, won't you give generously? Well, Steve Smith has spent his afternoon, and now he'll spend the rest of it back at the bench because the fellow by the name of David Hall checks in for his first play call for the line of scrimmage on a handoff that time by Rice going straight ahead picking up four yards to the 43 yard line of Michigan so David Hall coming in here passing the department 53 percent eight of 15 and he's carried the ball six times but on the first play that they took on the snap from Tom Dixon there was a handoff to the fullback Hall by the way started the first game of the season as Smith was still having trouble uh, with that shoulder. All a uh, senior from Pavonia Stevenson. Second at seven. And on the carry, not enough for the first down. He may be shy by a foot. Be very close though. It's Gary Smith on the carry and Joe Morton free safety making the stop. They'll bring it back to the 48 yard line. He's going to be shy about, about a yard and a half of that first down. You know, Michigan really has interchangeable parts up there, right? The first team offensive line is in there, along with Carthens as the tight end and Nelson as the tight end, and they're running a double tight end situation here. Vince being the wide out, but Kerry Smith is a tailback, Dan Wright's the fullback, and you really can't call them second string because they play almost as much as the first stringers. Here comes Rice. He's close to the 50 yard line and should have it up for the first down. You know, Bo has talked about his fullbacks. And of course, the tailbacks are the guys about to carry, but the fullbacks, besides good, strong runners, the best tandem blocking that he's had in a long time. Yeah, and, and here you see Rice going in. This is that play where he reads the block of the middle guard. You saw uh, Tom Dixon, the center, uh, with his back to you, blocking the man outside, and you saw Rice cut back to his right. But he reads that block by the center. Whichever way that center takes his man, Rice runs the other way off that block. Right behind Rice, Ben Lowell, the tailback, has just checked in for his first play of the afternoon. Kerry Smith has checked out. And Lowell's on the carry before he goes too far. A whistle sounds. He was greeted by Watkins. But the whistle had sounded. We'll wait for the officials to rule on that one. But ben Lowell, sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, number 38 in there. And last week, a week to remember when he scored the touchdown, there was motion for Michigan backfield. A low coming in this ball game with an average that's not too shabby. That's seven yards a carry. He's a long play of 17 yards, and, and he's a Kerry Smith type back. We've talked about we've talked about him, and there you see the motion number 75, I believe that that's Jerry Querna over there. No, that's Clay Miller. Clay Miller is in the game. He's the strong side tackle, anticipating the count a little bit. Jumped off sides, that's the motion penalty. But Ben Logue, who's now out of the game, Kerry Smith is in there, but you're seeing both similar backs. 
The wideouts, Mark Ray and B. And Gary Smith bullying his way. Back to the 48-yard line, then driven back to the 47. Well, the freshman, Ted Karras, the nose guard, getting credit for the stop on that one. Time has run out of that last uh, rush by Kerry Smith, so that's the end of the third quarter. And it's Michigan, 35, the Wildcats of Northwestern, nothing. Until recently, if you wanted to switch to the Burger King Whopper and you lived on 9th Street, you had to settle for a make-believe. You want to switch? Yes, sir. One Whopper, please, and hold the onions. But now there's a tastier alternative. Because with a little help from Burger King, some local folks have opened a store right in the neighborhood, which makes switching to a juicy Whopper as easy as walking across the street. Hey, don't tell me you're out of business. No, nope, just out for lunch. <laughs> Aren't you? I'm Bob McBride. My company makes steel, and more than a third of it goes into the best cars in the world. We've been selling steel in Detroit for 50 years. We're going to do it for the next 50 with quality, service, and delivery that rate number one. My company's National Steel, and when I say we're driving for number one, believe it. As the president of National, I won't settle for less. Wake up to Kelly and Company all this week. Monday, Cosmetic Wizard Adrian Arpel returns with more makeover magic. And Tuesday, ex-anchor woman Christine Kraft discusses her controversial case. Wednesday, find out why people are turning to anonymous sex. Thursday, we'll take a look at film's finest femme fatale. And Friday, we'll get hollering with a lesson in scream therapy. Okay. Dana Eubanks, seven in your life. Hey kids, you know, as a reporter, I've covered many stories involving children just like you who've been hurt or even killed in old rundown abandoned houses. Empty houses can look like a great adventure, but there can be broken glass or rats or even someone who may want to hurt you inside, and nobody can find you to help. Get a grown up to call Parks and Recreation to find a park or playground near you. It's much more fun to play here, where you can play it safe, right? Yay! I mentioned Ted Karras. He is the son of a fellow by the name of Ted Karras Sr., who played his college ball at Illinois and then played with the Chicago Bears. And young Karras, the nephew of Alex Karras, who gained fame with the Detroit Lions. All from Gary, Indiana. All Michigan this afternoon as we start the fourth quarter, leading 35 and nothing. Second down at 13, Hall with a lot of time. And off the carpet that time, intended for Vince B. Incomplete. So it'll be third and 13 for the Wolverines. In the rushing department for the Wolverines, Rogers has carried 19 times for 123 yards. Steve Smith, 10 carries for 60 yards. Garrett, 6 carries for 25. Kerry Smith has stood at the ball 8 times for 43. Dan Rice, the pullback, 3 carries for 11 yards. So 46 plays on the ground for a total of 262 yards by the Wolverines. The ground attack. Just turning it out. Third and 13 might be a passing situation here. Oh, looking for somebody. Trying to avert it. Now finds a man and fires to Tim Nelson complete for the first down. They had three receivers that could have shook hands. B, Mark Ray. And then Sim Nelson, who made the reception. But give David Hall a great deal of credit for coming out of that pressure and then seeing his receivers. Now, agreed, Ray, there were three of them right in the same area and were tough to miss because he had a three to pick from. But the thing about David Hall here, now he eludes four different people. Now he's got to look downfield and see a receiver. He spots them, sets up, throws a nice pass in there in between three receivers. Now, I think Michigan should probably, receivers should have come back to those people. And Joe Morton, a guy who's had a stand there and say, I wonder which guy I should tackle. Here. That's he right. I mean, I got, I got three of them in the same area. Which one are you going to throw to? And uh, one of the things I think that they should have done at that point was come back to the ball a little bit better because you saw them all kind of standing around waiting for all to deliver it. A receiver has got to help his quarterback when he's in trouble and come back to it. And I think that pass was really all David Hall. He just did a great job getting out of trouble and finding an open guy. Kerry Smith 
out of the ball game after that last carry picked up six yards a second down and four Smith now with 49 yards and nine carries and trying to slip to the outside finding a little running room that time was Ben Logue on his second carry might have got a couple of yards brought down by Torkelson the inside linebacker 13 34 to go in the ball game it's been all Michigan Hey, the Wolverines leading 35 dollars. Right now, here's a guy to watch. Number 22, the tailback is Gerald White. He is in the game. He's a freshman out of Florida, and he is supposedly one of the best that Michigan has ever had or ever recruited. He's a very good one, and we'll see if they get him the ball. Third and five. The great speed of White. We'll keep an eye. They said he's had a couple of weeks of dynamic practice. Here's White. Finds a hole, puts his head down. Might be about shy of a yard. Might have got four on the carry. And he fumbled the ball, right? He fumbled the ball in the middle of that pileup. And Northwestern is signaling that they have recovered. No indication from the officials yet. The officials are calling it Michigan's football. So Gerald White in his first carry fumbles the ball. He's a really highly recruited guy. Now watch the ball pop free right there. Now that should have been ruled a fumble and I'm sure that in the films the young freshman out of Florida will get the word from Bo hang on to the football if you'd like to play here. <laughs> he stays in the ball game at that tailback position. In front of him the fullback Dan Rice. Fourth and one. Rice on the carry has the first down. Close to the 20 yard line. Might rule them at the 21, but plenty of room for the first down and Michigan stays on with this drive just outside the 20 yard line of Northwestern. Don't forget now next week, the Hawkeyes of Iowa coming in here to Michigan Stadium. Gerald White, everybody's really excited about this, this young tailback as we take a look at Dan Rice and his afternoon, but Gerald White out of Titusville, Florida, Everybody's expecting big, big things from him, much in the neighborhood of Butch Wolfo. White trying to get a block from his fullback to try to spring loose. And force way out of bounds, driven a good 10 yards out of bounds into the bench, close to the Michigan band there, but he's okay. Education for the young man. Welcome. Driven out by Dave Dixon, excuse me. Welcome to the Big Ten. <laughs> Lost a yard on that carry, not lost a little more than that. A couple of yards. Just couldn't get the running room over there as Northwestern was stringing that one out pretty good on defense. Second and 13. Saw Nelson slide over the right side and then putting White in that wing back position. All oh, firing intercepted and Jennifer Bean. And intercepted that time by Lofton, Andre Lofton, out of Dallas, Texas, a freshman who'll remember that play for a long time. So a turnover by the Wolverines with 11.51 to go in the ball game. The score, Michigan 35, Northwestern nothing. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. I never was a company man. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. The standards of the both the students and the teachers have dropped. Teachers can't teach. Students don't learn. The accusations fly. Our schools are under attack. We're trying our best to get people our money's worth. And that money is going to have to be spent more wisely. And teacher burnout is a problem. Computers are expected to play a major role in the resurrection of our schools. Our school system works in Japan. Can we make it work again here? Find out on Making the Grade, a Channel 7 Action News close-up starting Monday at 6. Familiar sight for Northwestern seems like all day long, and every time you look at them going on offense, they are deep in their own territory. They've had about four starts at the 20, one around the 24, everything else inside the 20-yard line. On the handoff to the running back, the halfback, is Claudel Robertson on his first carry. He's had only 13 carries for the season, carries a 3-5 average. 
Northwestern runs a little trap fold block inside, and you see the hole pop open, and Robertson is able to get through it. Michigan's running some different people in there. Uh, uh, Jim Scarcelli is the outside linebacker. We've got uh, Hammerstein, Meredith, and Nate Rogers in at middle guard. Carlton Rose stays in as the linebacker with the two inside people, Mallory and Akers. Incomplete. That one intended for Edwards. Ricky Edwards, who just checked in, and Roberts had gone out. By the way, that last carry by Roberts for the first down of 14 yards. That makes Roberts a one carry, the leading rusher for the Wildcats this afternoon. Tough season again for Den Dennis Green, coach of the Wildcats. On their way, possibly, of being shut out for the fourth time this season. The only other team in the Big Ten to do it in Northwestern was Wisconsin. And Washington and Syracuse in the non-conference play. Second and ten that time. And Edwards on the carry. You see Carlton Rose gingerly moving around there. Looked as if he got his foot stepped on. He'll stay in there. Tommy. Split in uh, Todd Jenkins uh, coming into the game now. And Tom Hassel coming in for Rose, right? You're right. You saw Rose with that looked like a gimpy ankle. Somebody might have stepped on his foot. And so immediately Tommy Hassel comes into the ball game and takes over for him. On the other side is Scarcelli, Hewlett, Gant, Bakers, and Cooper. It looks like Cochran, rather, in the secondary. At the 29-yard line, Schwab. And Jennifer Edwards. Hewlett over there to cover. Edwards and Hewlett doing a little dance work there after Edwards grabbed the jersey of Hewlett, but it's incomplete. So it'll be fourth down, fourth and seven. Uh, nothing has clicked for the Wildcats. Actually, the Wildcats going in this ball game at average a little better than 21 first downs per game as Cooper waits on this punt, which means they've been able to move the ball and not really do much scoring. Today, they have not really done that much as far as first downs, I believe, unofficially four. Jim Snyder says officially it's four first downs. Almost blocked. Kid with a wobbly punt this time, bouncing around the Michigan 39-yard line and down at the 38. So with 10.25 to go in the ball game, Michigan 35, Northwestern nothing. Keep smiling. I'm Bob McBride. My company makes steel, and more than a third of it goes into the best cars in the world. We've been selling steel in Detroit for 50 years. We're going to do it for the next 50 with quality, service, and delivery that rate number one. My company's National Steel, and when I say we're driving for number one, believe it, as the president of National, I won't settle for less. Doris Bisco, seven in your life. When I was pregnant, I knew that the foods you eat during pregnancy are really important to the health of your baby. How pregnant mothers take care of themselves can make a life or death difference. It's called prenatal care, and your Detroit Health Department can help you learn more about it. They'll even arrange doctor's examinations. Don't take a chance with your health or your baby. Call about prenatal care. Do it for the two of you. Tom Hassel, a linebacker, being helped off the field. And I'll tell you the way he's hobbling there, Jim, with that leg hanging, dangling there, it looks like it's a knee. Oh, you hate to see that. Michigan has had such terrible luck at the linebacker position this year. They've already lost Mike Bourne. Hassel's been really one of their standouts all season long, one of their really steady linebackers. And coming up to games against Iowa and Illinois, you just hate to see a game like this, a Northwestern game where they're leading big and they get some people, key people hurt. Dave Hall on the first at 10, firing the beam, trapped and taken off the carpet. It is incomplete. So Hassel, one of many of the linebackers of Michigan that have gone down. And of course, we keep our fingers crossed as they continue to work on Hassel at the Michigan bench right now. With Drs. Gerald O'Connor and Robert Addison, what a job they have done along with trainer Russ Miller and his assistants, Rex Thompson and Dan Minert. 
They do a fine job of trying to keep everybody healthy. Ten twenty to go in this ball game. Thirty-five nothing, Michigan leading. Second and ten. Little delay that time. And to the 40 as White carries for a couple of yards. Now you saw a little bit of the kind of offensive moves Gerald White has. Came up to a guy and did a quick spin right out of his grasp. He does have some moves. And you got to have a few butterflies. And some say, well, once you carry and get hit the first time, hey, the freshman down there knows a lot of people's watching and he's going to get a second review after the coaches look at the film and probably dictate how much more he'll play during the season, of course, how the games go. But still got to be a little tentative, a little nervous. David Hall continuing a quarterback, third and eight, a couple of yards on that carry by White. Completes it out there for a first down. And that time on the reception, Milt Carthen. So Milt with his third reception of the year after a couple of big catches last week against Michigan State. Good pattern by Milt Carthens in that he went down right to the yardage he needed for the first down and then turned it outside. He didn't go any further. He just went down to the first down yardage, made his cut, Got in the open, you see, just a yard past it. That's exactly what you want in that kind of a pattern. Two for five for Hall on the air for 31 yards. First and 10 for Michigan at the 49. Here's White again on the carry coming back inside. And close to the 45-yard line. Well, a lot of them faithful of Michigan probably have gone to their program now and said 22. Oh, yeah, White. I've read a little bit about him, but didn't. They'll hear too much about them. Well, they're going to hear about them. They will hear about them in the years to come, and we're seeing right now, really, I think the tandem of backs we'll be seeing in the future. Gerald White coming out of the game, and into the game comes Ben Logue. So these are the kind of guys like, well, like Kerry Smith and Rick Rogers are this year. They're the same kind of backs. They'll be the people that you'll be seeing in the years to come as the tandem tailbacks for Michigan. Second and seven. And Hall passing has been open. Good reception, and he's hauled out of bounds at around the 34-yard line. Same kind of pattern that they ran earlier, except this time David Hall threw the ball much better. The prior pass he threw, he threw into the ground. This time David sets up, throws it up in the air. Vince Bean is open for that second, and the ball arrives in good shape. Vincent holds on. Michigan with a big first down. Letting Hall get some experience, let him play, get some time in the game along with these young backs and linemen. Hall is three for six for 46 yards. Here is White. Good driving that time. You can see the legs churning. Looked as if he might be trapped at the line of scrimmage. Just kept moving. Then he got barely inside the 30-yard line, and it was Cruz that finally knocked him off his feet. So White now with five carries. And here's and a total now of 10 yards. And Ray, here's another running back coming in there. Thomas Wilcher, number 27. Uh, I mean, Wilcher has <laughs> waited a long time to have uh, this kind of a day, at least to get back into action. And he has the same kind of pre-publicity that uh, Gerald White has had, although they give the ball to the fullback on that occasion. But Wilcher is another one that they expect great, great things out of, and he's out of the Detroit area. Dan Rice on that carry that time, the fullback. And he gets a couple of yards, make it third down, give him a yard to make it third down at five. Wiltshire checking out number 27. White coming back in at the tailback position for Michigan. Down to 723 in this ball game. Michigan leading 35 to nothing. That was a score at the end of three quarters of play. So they have not struck pay dirt here in the fourth quarter. Or they've scored in every other quarter. A couple of touchdowns in the first quarter. And a couple in the second. One in the third. Hall trying to find somebody. And that one a little bit low. He had White open. He liked him to go a little deeper that time around the 17-yard line. That one intended for Sim Nelson underthrow. So it'll be fourth and five. Well, next Friday night here on the campus of Michigan. Big doings going on. It'll be the Hall of Honor banquet being underway right around 5.30 at Chrysler Arena. Nine former greats in the athletic world of Michigan to be honored. 
Michigan one for three on fourth down conversions today. And they'll not convert this time as Keith Cruz, the junior, is in there and brought us 268 pounds in to David Hall. And that's all from Michigan. They turn the ball over with a timeout right now, 6.58 to play, 35 nothing, Michigan. The company said they had plans for me. Said I was crazy to throw it away to train horses. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. Glad I had my own plans. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. Maybe you don't think you can give more to the torch drive this year. Times are tough. But perhaps you'd understand why we need your help if you saw things from a different point of view. Maybe you would listen to our needs if you couldn't hear. And you might see how much we need your help if you lost your sight. Because although times are tough for you, they could be a lot tougher. So please, won't you give generously? Well, you can make, mark it down right now with 6.58 to go in this ball game. Bo Schembechler bringing in his reserve troops right now on defense. For the Wolverines. We'll try to pick out a few for you. Schwab trying to find somebody and had no luck that time at all because one of those new fellows that came into the ball game was Mike Hammerstein, who made the tackle. Nice to have Mike back. It is. He had an opening the season. He was considered the best defensive lineman as a pass rusher, and he broke his hand, a bone in his wrist. Here he comes around the outside. You can see him fight through that block and hang on to Schwab's ankles. He's a very, very good pass rusher. Loss of five. Second down at 15 at the 28 of Northwestern. 6.15 to play. They formed the screen for Edwards. Complete to Edwards, found daylight, got across the 40-yard line, close to the 42 of Northwestern. Shy, maybe by a foot or two, of that first down. Rich Hewlett finally brought him down. You can see that Edwards, strictly a type of runner, looks for daylight if he can. You can see the screen is set up well. And there are two or three blockers right out in front of him. And in the open field, Ricky Edwards is a good, tough runner. There you saw his ability stopping on a dime, avoiding one tackle. Finally, number 35, that's Dieter Heron. One of the new players into the game in Michigan secondary comes over to make the stop. John Ferens is also in the game at a defensive halfback position, as is Fritz Burgess. They are the three backs. The safety is Rich Hewlett. Linebacker Tim Anderson in the game. A lot of new names, a lot of new faces, and again, this is good for these kids. They work hard every day during the week in practice, and a lot of times they don't get a chance to play during a game. Some of them haven't played in four years, and it's really their opportunity to get out in front and, as they call it, in the big show. Get an idea of what's been happening with the yardage today. Michigan dominating. That's combined, of course, with passing and rushing. Northwestern first and ten. And the first down, Schwab, again on the screen pass to Edwards. Up the middle, has enough for the first down of the Michigan 45-yard line. And Hewlett knocking him right off his feet, hitting him low. Tim Anderson had a shot at Edwards in the backfield, and Edwards made a great little move, and Anderson ran right by him. This is what you call overrunning the ball. Another screen, negating the big rush. Here's Anderson, 57. Watch him, just a stop. And Anderson runs right by, and Edwards gets about 10, 12, 15 yards after Anderson missed him, although we have a flag on the play. Flag back at the 35-yard line of Northwestern. That ball being brought back. So a nice play by Edwards. Maybe for not. Frustrating day for Schwab. He's been running for his life on several occasions, sacked a couple of times. Well, he is... He has gotten out of three situations where Michigan could have had safeties today, and he has just barely made it. I mean, he has had a rough, long afternoon, but, boy, he's shown us something. He has shown real good quickness and real poise under some heavy, heavy pressure. 
And I think Northwestern might have had an illegal man downfield on that screen. Nope, yep, they're going to call it holding. Holding against the Wildcats. So the penalty, Dennis Green, in his third season. I'm sure he thought by now that his ball clubs would be doing a little bit better and very, very tough. At the 33 yard line of Northwestern, first down and 19. Split the backs in the Northwestern backfield wide this time. Swing pass out to Edwards. They get the screen. And Edwards gets a few yards after making the reception. What a nice play by Michigan Preserve. Dieter Heron, number 35 in the game. He did a good job from his safety spot reading that screen and coming up and fighting through the blocks. Well, I'm glad that uh, you picked out uh, Dieter's number because the uh, last time I had him was for another number. That's why we didn't pick him out. I'll take the jersey off of uh, Bergeron. 19 foot Heron, 35, right? Beginning of the year, there were a couple of 19s out there, Jim Snyder. <laughs> That reminds me, he says, hey, we're halfway into the season. You ought to know by now. Off the fingertips and plenty of punishment that time for Eric Anderson as he was really batted and doubled around by Dieter Heron. Heron is a sophomore out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, a decent little player back there in that secondary. Take a look at it. You see Heron coming back there, and he sees the ball coming. Now he's just setting his sights on that receiver, and that's good you know, it's not necessarily great coverage because the receiver was open, but the big hit is just as good because it's going to make that receiver think the next time around. Now Heron comes out of there as a defensive back, and Fritz Burgess, the senior out of Pasadena, California, checks in as that Michigan defensive backfield. Long and deep and incomplete around the 25-yard line, and that time try to go to Anderson. Incomplete. So punting situation as John Kidd checks in. We're down to 420. And for the last four or five minutes, Michigan fans have been making their way out of the Michigan Stadium. Nearly 104,000 here this afternoon, Ray. 103, 9, 14 on hand uh, for this Michigan Northwestern game. And that's really a credit to the Michigan program in a game that everybody expects is going to be a blot and a big score, not really terribly competitive kind of game, and yet these people show up every Saturday. Kid now with his 10th punt on the afternoon. Sends Cooper over to the far sideline, takes it at the 19. Does a little uh, high wire act trying to stay in bounds and goes out of the 25. Timeout with 413 to go in the game. Michigan. Michigan all the way, 35 to 9. Burger King presents the McDonald's. An unusual interview. Is it true all of you switched to Burger King? Yes! Yeah. How come? Bacon double cheeseburger. Flame broiling. The Whopper. French fries. Being McDonald's, you must take a lot of ribbing. Yes, we can't show our faces anywhere anymore. <laughs> Would you advise everyone to switch to Burger King no matter what their name is? You bet. You bet. Okay, America. Now when you switch to Burger King, you can tell them... The McDonald's sent you. John Gross, seven in your life. As a sports reporter, I know that drug abuse has ruined a lot of athletic careers, but it wasn't until drugs nearly ruined my nephew that the problem hit home. Last year, more than 37,000 youngsters dropped out of school in Michigan, and too often drugs were involved. Oh yeah, they might seem like fun now, but in the end, they're a waste. I've seen it. Don't waste your life. If you have questions, your Detroit Health Department has answers. Hey guys, let's score. Seven up. Seven up. Jim Harbaugh, number four, comes in and takes over the quarterback -y duties for the University of Michigan, replacing Hall. They had taken over earlier in the third quarter. White on the carry, gets outside and picks up a few extra yards after he was met there inside the 30. They broke out and got up to around the 33, finally hauled in by Joe Morton. Bob Perryman has checked in for Michigan at fullback, and he was out there to block that last time. White now has carried six times for 18 yards. In the offensive line, we've also got some changes. 
Jerry Querna up there at quick tackle. Bob Papowski is one guard. Mark Hammerstein is the, the strong side tackle. And Bob Tabacino is in there at one guard with, it looks like Valortis or Sweeney at center. Perriman on the carry that time up to the 35 yard line. Should, his motion should give him enough for the first down. Might have got across the 35, close to the 36, and then shoved back. So Perriman gets the first down. At the 36 yard line of the Wolverines, we're down to 327 remaining in this game. Jim talked about the crowd of close to 104,000. And we'll be jam packed next week with the Hawkeyes of Iowa coming in, and that could really be a tough battle for Shem Buckler and the Wolverines. Well, Iowa has one thing going for them that they've had since Hayden Fry's gotten there, and that is they play outstanding defense. Watched some of the films yesterday afternoon of Iowa against Northwestern, and they got a quarterback that's not afraid to throw the ball either. Fumble, Perriman on the carry, and whether he got it back or not, I don't know. Let's check it. Wilcher on the carry, 27. Perriman is 37. Yeah, Thomas Wilcher gets the ball, heads outside, and loses the ball. Looks like he never had control after the handoff, but did manage to get it back. Michigan retains possession. And Wilcher now coming out of the game and back in Gerald White. Got a new wide receiver in there in Sessa for Michigan. Mike Sessa, a wing back, junior out of St. Joe, Michigan. Second at 12 of the Wolverines. There's White. Got a good block. Springs around. Perriman through the good block. Right around the 34 to get him loose. And now we're going to get a penalty against Northwestern. We might get a face mask call. Going out of bounds, the Northwestern tackler got a hold of Gerald White's face mask. It was unintentional, but nonetheless, yep, there it is. The penalty against the Wildcats, and nothing has gone their way today. Joe Morton in there that uh, committed that foul. Now Bob Perriman comes up, makes the block. Good little cut in there by White to fake those people chasing. And let's take a look at it. There you see the right hand come up and grab the face mask as White's being forced out of bounds. So they'll march the ball now on the penalty to the 45. The officials call for a timeout. We've got 2.14 remaining in this ball game. As they make sure now that they want to where they place that ball at the 35 and they will have the down box maybe just inches away. So again we'll remind you be the Hawkeyes of Iowa coming in next week against the Wolverines of Michigan for our next telecast and we sure hope that you'll join us for that one. And of course Jim's got some doing to do with Bo Schembechler and Mich Michigan replay Michigan replay on most of these Wolverine sports network stations across the state of Michigan and all over the country really we've got Phoenix we've got Philadelphia we've got folks all over everywhere watching Michigan football and Michigan replay and tonight I think we're going to talk to Bo a little bit about what he got out of this Northwestern game whether he was pleased with a kind of performance on an intensity level that he wanted out of his club and whether he thinks that it's a proper tune-up if you will into that Iowa game next week because the next two weeks with Iowa and Illinois are going to be very, very important to this Wolverine football team if they want to make a return trip to Pasadena. No doubt about it. Just inches away from the first down as they get the chain all set on the far side of the field. The Wolverines are all set to go. Coming up to that line of scrimmage, second down. And a short yard for that first down. Him, uh, Harbaugh, the quarterback, waiting to get things going here. And we're 2.14 away from the end of this ball game. Eric Caddis and Milt Carthens are the two tight ends in this set, right? Perriman and White are the running backs behind Harbaugh. And Arbor Pioneer a few years ago, that young man, hand off to Perriman, has the first down. Gets up close to the 48-yard line. And so they'll move the chain into Northwestern Territory. Bob and Turkelson in there to make the stop. 2-12 remaining. That was the second carry by Perriman now for a total of six yards. Michigan leading 35 nothing, and close to only two minutes remaining in this ball game. I'd like to offer a birthday congratulations today to young Diane Brown, the assistant sports information director here at the University of Michigan. Ah, nice to be 23, isn't it? <laughs> Harbaugh with his first pass of the 83 season, and attended over there on the far side of the field, shooting for Gene Lawson. And it was incomplete. 
And I want to tell you what, Jim Harbaugh got free by Keith Cruz. He threw the ball, and as soon as he released it, he was drilled. Lawson getting his second week of play. Harbaugh, the same story as he got a little action last week against Michigan State. In the first down department in this ball game, Michigan with 21, Northwestern kept to just six. 35 nothing, Michigan. 146 remaining. The clock stops after that incomplete pass by Harbaugh. So we're second and 10 at the 48 of Michigan. White on the carry. And getting a little daylight right at the midfield stripe. We got about three extra yards out of the play. Perriman again with a pretty good block. Perriman, not only a good runner, but impressed a couple of times on his blocking. You know, as you take a look at this Michigan offense, you realize the backs that Bo has to choose from this year. Running backs, he's got four fullbacks. He's got five tailbacks. And that's without Mercer. He's got Lowe, Wiltshire, White, Smith, and Rogers as tailbacks. Perryman, Rice, Garrett, and Armstrong as fullbacks. That's a little question of maybe White being redshirted this year, but he has seen action today. And he just about gets back to the line of scrimmage. White has carried now nine times for 29 yards. No gain on that play. Down to 49 seconds. Conway Lane, along with Jim Branstetter, we're very glad you could join us for our telecast for this ball game and our previous ones. We hope that you'll stick right with us for the rest of this season here in the Big Ten. Waiting for the punt, Eric Anderson. And the punt by Bracken, bouncing into the end zone. So again, the clock is stopped. And we're down to 26 seconds. And Northwestern, the final gasp coming up here at the 20-yard line. Well, Schembechler got to be pleased with, you know, the way this one went in the sense that he came out of it with a 35 to nothing victory. I'm sure he's he's not happy with some of the mistakes, I think, that was made in the second half. But again, after building up the 28 to nothing lead in the first, first half, it looks like the first team offense and defense did a good enough job. He's got to be pleased there. And I think in particular with the defensive line and the rush that they put on Sandy Schwab. Schwab stayed in the ball game at quarterback for Northwestern. Makes a handoff, not going any. Oh, just <laughs> last desperation. <laughs> Sidearm over, looked like a breaking pitch for a strike. And Hugent taking the reception. Would you do that again, Ray? That, oh, do that. That was, I, that was a beauty. I like that one. Schwab, you know, we talked about him and his ability, but here, here it is. He is wrapped up here by Scarcelli. Now watch this. He just underhands it and he completes it but it's the last play of the game as Hugic slips down and Michigan goes out of here with a victory Ray a big one a big one is right final score 35 to nothing and a minus yardage on the passing department by Schwab today for a minus one final score Wolverines 35 Northwestern nothing. I'm Bob McBride my company makes steel and more than a third of it goes into the best cars in the world. We've been selling steel in Detroit for 50 years. We're going to do it for the next 50 with quality, service, and delivery that rate number one. My company's National Steel. And when I say we're driving for number one, believe it. As the president of National, I won't settle for less. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. I never was a company man. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. There's nothing so fragile as a flicker of hope. Ill winds threaten to extinguish it. Forgotten promises attack its source. It can drown in a drop of apathy. To stay alive, a flicker of hope requires a single most precious source of fuel, you. Your care can ignite that flicker of hope into a flame. Give to the torch drive. Give something extra this year. People who need, need people who care. Now more than ever. 
On our next Good Afternoon Detroit, is it possible to have a career as a fashion designer right here in Detroit? Well, it's proving to be successful for one person. We'll show you what we mean. It's time to reap the fruits of the fall harvest, but what do you do with a bushel of apples to keep them fresh all winter long? Jim Oak shares a great idea. Your vacation plans were cut short because air travel is too expensive? Don't unpack your bags. Sylvia Glover shows you how you can still take to the skies. And Jackie has your astrological forecast. That's Good Afternoon Detroit, weekdays at 4 on 7. Hail to the victors! Yes, hail to the Michigan Wolverines as they knock off the Wildcats of Northwestern, 35 to nothing, and I would say with ease. Really was with ease, in the first half especially, scoring 28 points. I don't know how happy Bo's going to be, though. I think he saw some mistakes. I think he saw a little bit of lack of concentration, maybe because offensively it was so easy in the first half to do that. Northwestern only gave him one turnover, but... I think defensively he's going to be pleased because they put a lot of pressure on Schwab. They forced Northwestern totally out of a game plan that last year got a, a lot of yards against Michigan. So I think defensively he'll be pleased. I think offensively he's going to do some work this week. Michigan's record now in the conference play earns their spot again and staying right at the top rung. 4-0. The Wildcats slipping to 1-3. Let's look ahead. Hawkeyes of Iowa coming to town. It's going to be a real football game. It's not going to be like today where... Michigan comes out and then I think in a sense offensively going through the motions and winning they've got to play a great game offensively against Iowa because the Hawkeyes are very good defensively that's the key to that game how well Michigan plays on offense against a very tough defense of Iowa like defensively they've come along during the year so they're going to be pretty sticky against anybody and that includes Iowa's offense that's next Saturday we'll look for you for our telecast now speaking for Jim I'm Ray Lane so long everybody